Ah, that's it. It's we're live. <laughs> Took a bit longer today. Good evening, everybody. Today is what's the day today? Thursday, the thirteenth of December, two thousand and eighteen. Um, hello to everybody in the chat room and obviously on the panel today we have our Patricia, we have Joe Hill and we have Authentic Intent Josh. Hey everybody. Hey, everybody. hey, 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 hey. So, Josh. I've got quite a few things to ask you now. Obviously, you two met each other at the conference, didn't you, a couple of weeks ago? You and Joe. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and actually, I've known, I I met Josh probably, it was a while ago that I met you down uh, at a yeah. meetup. Mm -hmm. All right, so you've met each other yeah, before. Yeah, at the cool. uh, Flat Earth Brewery. I mean, what, what better place to have a Flat Earth Brewery? But... You know, it is specifically like a brewery. So to get any food, you have to go outside and get like one of the vending to give you food. So we're, uh, I'm going to plan something every weekend, whether it be Saturday or Sunday, maybe even one time a week. Just some people that you know, don't have availability over the weekend. This Saturday, the 15th at 2 p.m., come down to St. Louis Park. There's a restaurant there, and I've posted a video you can check out and get some more details about that. So if you're in the Minneapolis area, come by. Are you doing stuff with Marilyn Free Spirit? She's on the East Coast, so it would be a bit All right, difficult. Are you doing stuff with her? I thought I heard yeah. somebody saying that you were, but anyway, you're not. And, and, and talk. We have a, a, a little you know, activist, flat earth activists uh, hang out that we, you know, tend to try to keep up to date on, you know, what's going on and, you know, different ideas and whatnot. Because I've come up with some ideas in regards to it being cold out. I mean, it's hard to have some conversations with people here in Minneapolis when it's so cold. And if it was cold and the sun was out, I think that might be different. But I, I think probably what, Joe, you think in the last three weeks or so, we've probably seen the sun three or four times. They, I like my cameras have been sitting there because usually I'm out looking at the stars and I'm, it's just been clouds after clouds after clouds. No, no, not really. Only England gets cloud after cloud after cloud, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, the last number of weeks. So allegedly over the weekend, it's supposed to be sunny. So pull out to the, the meetup. So. I might have to try to get there. Are you not used to so not many clouds late. then? Um, I, I, I mean, I am, but when it's so consistent. Like it's been quite consistent the last couple of weeks. Well, I guess is what I'm saying. Whereas, you know, if like I had posted something on Facebook, what would people prefer during the winter time? above freezing cloudy or below freezing and always sunny. And they hear on that. Some people liked it when it was cold and sunny and other people were like, yeah, I could deal with the cloud if it's above freezing because then I can, you know, do stuff outside. Okay? But Can I just say that now you're talking, your microphone's breaking up a little bit there, Josh. Yeah, I'm on, I'm using my... Uh, Phone, maybe maybe take your take your picture off. Just take your picture off. It will save your bandwidth. Yeah, yeah it might be. It, yeah, it might be bandwidth. Yeah. Not that we don't, you know, we'll miss your beautiful face, but it just will help your bandwidth. Yeah, you all know what I look like, right? Yeah, so, we know what you look like. Right. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. plus, sometimes even just moving the camera or moving your your phone just a little bit will clear it all up too. Sometimes I think it sounds better already. It's annoying, that isn't it? You put your camera on and it it stops your phone working. <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, yeah. maybe he's popping back out and popping back in. I don't know. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, he left. He's probably just 
he's probably reconnecting. Okay, who's actually sounding okay then? I I couldn't even hear him. Or well, for a little while it, he was cutting out pretty bad. And I'll just invite him again. There he is. Hi. Oh, there he is. He's back. You know what's funny is uh, on these hangouts, this problem always happens where where people lose connection and stuff like that. Yeah. Hello. 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 Well, you're back. You sound okay now. All right. Oh, I connected to the coffee shop Wi-Fi for the time being till I got a oh, step out. Much, uh, much better. Yeah. Sorry, Plus, you were saying. Uh, I'll shut my camera off so that you guys can't see me drinking from everybody's favorite coffee shop. <laughs> So what what were you saying, Josh? I'm sorry, because obviously we couldn't hear you. So what what were you telling us? Oh, um, probably nothing really important. I think it was just. I I do think that the the weather uh, it has just become more noticeable now that a lot of us are more privy to, you know, the chemtrailing and the geoengineering, the politically correct term, where. It's it's like where do really I mean where do these clouds come from? I can't believe how cloudy it has been here. It, just a constant overcast, and it's like where where does where do these clouds continue to come from, and and how are they able to just stay around? Especially when you look at the weather, the quote weather forecast says that it's supposed to be sunny one day, and then you wake up and it's still an overcast. I guess that's all I'm saying. I flew my drone, uh, I'm going to say probably three weeks ago or a, a month ago. Uh, so it wasn't really cold, that cold out. And it was overcast and I like really overcast. And so I was like, I'm going to get up above the clouds because I, I hacked it so that I can go as high as I want or as high as the battery will allow. And I had to go, I went up through four, uh, I didn't get out of the clouds till almost 5,000 feet. So it was just like a big thick thing of water, you know, which is funny because shouldn't it be on the ground if there's gravity? <laughs> well, and one thing that I, um, I have, uh, you know, a weather app, it's not any better or worse than any other weather app that's probably out there. But for the last two days, I, I have gotten air quality alerts and it keeps telling me that the air quality today is going to be low. And it's like, what does that even mean? So you're telling yeah. me that the air quality is low today. How is that any different than any other day? That and is what you, weird. What are you trying to tell me? Who sends that? I mean, like who, who initiates a, a, like a, a warning like that? I don't know, I, you know who would do that. Uh, yeah. the, the Department of Air. Yeah. They probably have one. Um, so yeah, Joe, like, what did you think, uh, just to go back to what we were talking about before with the conference, what did you, what, what at first initialized you wanting to go? And then how was your experience? It was Nathan Roberts that initially, that made, made me want to go. I, cause I just hadn't, like when I talked to you, when I, we met up for coffee that one time and I, I, I just said, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not going. I, I just didn't really consider it really or whatever. And I thought it was cool. You were going. And then. Um, I was talking to him on the phone one day and he's, he asked me if I'm going and I'm like, nah, because it does kind of feel like I, the, the, the things that I'm talking about are not necessarily always the things that, uh, I'm, I guess what I mean is I feel like I'm always pushing the line with people or like pushing the edge with people, even flat earth people. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to, I'm just saying what, what I'm learning or what, what I'm believing myself is is a little different than a lot of the people at the conference but at the same time what was the conference it was a flat earth conference and the earth is flat but as far as the conference it was awesome it was awesome so i ended up buying a ticket uh last kind of like last minute and just took off and went there it was awesome i thought it was like it was very uh comforting to be around people that know the truth. That that was like probably the biggest thing for me. And so like with your 
your views and your biblical knowledge. What do you think about the conversations recently with regarding uh, Nathan Roberts and Rob Skiba and how they and Dean O'Dell, uh, how they had the hangout? What was it like last Friday or something like that? And the law and so on. Yeah, like, I, I think it's simple is what I think. I think there's a lot of people who in their heart, they are, they're like, they're seeking the same thing. Do you know what I mean? We're seeking to be, to do what God wants us to do. Basically, that's what we're all doing. I mean, if we're, if we're thinking that way, if we're thinking, you know, on a different way or whatever, that's, I'm not going against anything, but <clears throat> um, as far as the, like the law and the spirit and all that, I think that it's simpler than than even any kind of like debate that's going on or because because you see it on Facebook and um, and I'm putting stuff on Facebook because I want people to think um, it to me like if we all stand back away from this world and like look from way back here and just look at there's all these people spreading truth all of a sudden these last three years there's like people going all over there there's marriages breaking up over this and there's all these things happening, people getting fired from their pastor jobs and, you know, all this stuff and, and flat earth conference for the first time and for the second time. And, and there's all these people gathering together, right? We're gathering together with one truth in mind. So you have the people that they, they feel the, the, like this, this part of it, you know, the, uh, there, like that, I I would say that that has consumed me. The Bible has just consumed me because it's been teaching me so much. And what I, I guess what I'm saying is, looking from far away, we've got the Bible people, we've got the people doing a lot of science, we've got the we've got every single area of stuff being like totally searched out and figured out, and like knowledge will be increased. Like that's what's happening. And, and I don't mean the whole world's gaining knowledge. I mean, a very small group of us has made it. So we have gained a crazy amount of knowledge and we've found a new reality that was hidden from us. And to me, how could that be hidden if it wasn't hidden by something super, something uh, not human, you know what I'm saying? Something, uh, and so then in the Bible, you know, of course it has that story at the end where the whole world was deceived. But is that what you were kind of talking about? Like what, what, uh, like the law and the spirit? I think that. Well, I'm the, the law. I mean, you're either under law or you're under grace, right? Yeah. So either Jesus I think we're all, fulfilled the law or he didn't. And we're, we're supposed to see how I feel is like, we're innately supposed to understand what the law is and we abide by it. Mm -hmm. Because you 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 still don't see people doing a lot of the things that the Ten Commandments tell you not to do. Because that's just your innate nature, too. So whether you need somebody to tell you not to steal something or you, you just know in your heart when you're eight years old. That you when, don't kill somebody or whatever. That, yeah. you don't, that you don't do something wrong, then there's that. But I guess I guess my point is is I see a lot of people who do um pervert grace and the, or the law and by that i means you see a lot of christian christians and that i use that term incredibly loosely me too with uh christmas and putting up a christmas tree and it's like well i've always put up a christmas tree or it's been tradition and it's like okay how do you separate yourself from people in the world and how do you put yourself in line with what you know, your beliefs are, if, if that is the Bible, I get, and so, you know, so are you, are you supposed to put up a Christmas tree because of tradition or do you just do it because you don't want to offend your family and say, well, I, I feel like it's okay to put up a Christmas tree and celebrate Christmas because, you know, how else do we celebrate Jesus's birthday? Right. Quotes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, guess I'm I guess I'm confused with both sides of, that's Nathan Roberts a, and Rob Skiba's. I think you just hit on, you just said something that was so important. Um, 
a Christmas tree is a Christmas tree. And I think in Jeremiah or something, it says, don't put up a Christmas tree. <laughs> Basically, it says, not yeah, for... Jeremiah 10. Yeah. So, so we do have that. We, that's like, um, I guess what I'm saying is we, uh, let me, I, uh, I got to read a verse because it speaks to this. If something's hidden from, from someone and they don't have knowledge of it, and like if they can't have knowledge of it is what I mean is if something is 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 literally hidden from someone, they won't be held accountable for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if 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 flat earth was a, a problem for God and that's why he showed us because people are worshiping a, an image or something. And if that's the case, um, his his spirit is what's teaching us that, like how to be how to follow his commands. Because yes, there's the Ten Commandments, and and I think that obviously, like you were saying, those are almost things that are built into a human being that we already kind of know these things. But it's the the deceiver works in a way where he goes underneath what we're thinking or whatever, and like he has a spiritual dominion on Earth, and it's it's subtle or it's it's like not um, something that we notice, like flat Earth. We just didn't realize that Earth was flat our whole lives because of the the place we were put. Do you know what I mean? We we, we were born in this world uh, where there was spaceships and there was Star Wars and there was all this stuff. And that's the world we were born into. So for us to switch, that's the same thing as us taking the Christmas tree out of our house and saying, I'm not going to live by that way anymore. I'm not... And, and you're not maybe not going to condemn somebody else because maybe they don't understand the same things that you understand or the truth that you see in it. And so maybe to them, it isn't even anything wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's almost like individual a little bit. But again, Jeremiah 10, like you're saying. So it it is a good question. <laughs> yeah, um, I, and, and that's kind of where I've I've started to think about traditions and you know the super bowl coming up you know this this time of year is is i think a great opportunity to share truth which, whichever that is mm -hmm. but i think a lot of people who do follow a particular code of ethics that is lined out in what would be considered the bible i think a lot of people stop at the gospel and they're content at waiting for the rapture or waiting yeah. for their time to pass and then just moving on. And they themselves aren't doing anything to help people wake up. Like when I yes, do right. activism out in public, I don't necessarily feel led to talk about the gospel all the time because some people aren't gonna listen to that. So I have to address what you're listening to the spirit. they're going to talk about. What, what are they interested in? Sorry, you know? I, I keep cutting you off, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just saying like, I, I think that it's important to talk about what's important to them and show yes. them truth and the falsehoods in what they're believing, because then that brings them to a realization that they're being lied to. And then that will draw them to a creator. And you know? let me give, let me give just, uh, this here is an example what you're doing, what you just said about you're called to, to do what you're doing. And you're obviously very good at it. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that's how the Holy spirit works. He's got some people studying the law and, and telling everybody we need to do this. We, we need to follow by the law and live by this Torah. And so you have what I'm saying is the Holy Spirit is directing our hearts. That is the commandment. Like that's that's how we get uh, the law is through Jesus sending his spirit. And that and that's like, I mean, look right now. Where did flat earth come from? I say that I learned it from the spirit of truth. I mean, I didn't. I didn't learn that Earth was well, flat. Can I say something? Don't yeah. don't you feel though that this whole thing, whether it's in a book or whatever, it's something that's in your heart and your head. This is imprinted in our hearts and our heads. We can't exactly. get away from it. Josh doesn't sleep. Joe doesn't sleep. Most of the chat room hardly sleep. I don't sleep. We're researching, looking, listening, waiting. We're a people that, uh, and I'm not boasting. I'm saying we're, we're written about in here at the end. At the end, God calls a bunch of people 
to do something, to preach something that the world hates. <laughs> That's what's happening. I mean, it's called the everlasting gospel or the gospel of the kingdom, or we could call it whatever we want, but we know that it's flat earth. Maybe what we need to do is spread the word of love. That would be a really good one. Spread love. Jesus and, said said that too. Well, and I, see, and I, again, I'm going to continue to bring it back to talking to people in public. Because this, and I appreciate, because that's how I came to the knowledge of various truths that I am passionate about right now. You know, 9-11, vaccines, flat earth, through social media. But we have to grow from talking just on social media out into the public and be the teachers of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love it when you say that. We are the we, ones that have to teach. You're, you're right. We have to go out to the public and make it a point that this is important for you to know. Now, whatever background you have, whatever belief system that you have, which a lot of people believe in scientism, right, with outer space and the priesthood of scientists and whatnot and the validation that they get from believing in people that have been in education for 20 years, mm -hmm. they assume that these people uh, know what they're talking about. But then again, they're in a system that has just been regurgitated back to them. They haven't been to the moon. They haven't been to outer space. So that's why I can go out in public and I can confidently say, you're believing in scientism and you're believing in second and third party information. And then they could say the same thing about to me about flat earth, right? And I'll say, exactly. But because you believe in outer space, I can come here and say, I'm agnostic. You know, so I'm agnostic about where we live, whether it be a, a sphere or flat earth. I don't think, I, I don't believe in uh, the, the ball earth. So what's the default? And it can't be that it's the earth is too big for us to see curvature because we have no, val we have no genuine pictures of earth from space. But we can take pictures of Jupiter. How is it that we can take pictures of Jupiter when it's hundreds of times bigger than earth but we have to use composites to stitch together pictures of earth. And then we have to take testimony of military personnel who may or may not have been into an environment where they just so happen to create a suit that they've never been able to test or validate themselves, but then it works perfectly on the moon. And I keep going back to the, the shows that are out right now and in the past. I mean, even the original Star Trek, all of those three, the three seasons of Star Trek with Captain Kirk were all before the moon landing. And then we land on the moon and then it just so happens to be the exact environment that they're displaying for entertainment purposes, the exact environment. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Josh, Sorry. I love listening to you talk, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, well done, Josh. Big hugs, Josh, keep going. <laughs> Hug you guys. And that's, um, so my conversation on Saturday, it's the po it's the video that um, says something to the effect of you can be so connected to the earth, but then s separate from the spirit. I dug right into this guy at the very end of the conversation because I wanted to him to understand that we all have a moral code and we go about our business projecting our moral code on everybody else that we see. Like I could probably get up from this, everybody's favorite coffee shop here and walk out to my car with all of my personal items here and feel fairly confident that nobody's gonna take my stuff, right? But that doesn't mean that the rulers of the earth don't have the proper resources and the income to then deceive the entire um, human race. Cause then I'm projecting my own personal moral code and saying, oh, I'm not, I'm a liar, but I just white lie, right? Um, I don't, I don't go about my business to intentionally lie, but if I'm caught in a particular situation where I have to kind of bend the truth a little bit, I don't consider that a lie. So then I project that same moral code on our politicians and the rulers of the earth and assume that they have my best interests at heart. When most of us here in the chat room know that that's not true. So I had to put him in his place because I, I asked him 
have you ever lied or have you ever stolen anything? And he said yes to both. And I had to reassure him that what he just said was, okay, so you admitted that you're a liar and you're a thief, but what you're doing is you're projecting your own moral code on other people. And you're assuming, oh, they can't lie to everybody about that. That's too grand of a lie. And it's like, no, 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 no. You're assuming that because of your own personal experiences and your past and how you go about your business, that these people have the exact same experiences and would never lie to people. You know, that's like assuming that politicians, celebrities, and sport figures send their kids to public school. Of course they don't send their kids to public school because they know public school is for indoctrination purposes and to literally dumb down and limit our potential to keep everybody at a 90 IQ or less. So then they can manage the people. And so when I, when I do, uh, you know, and, and people might not agree with my tactics, but sometimes you have to, when you're talking to somebody, you have to get to the, the brunt of the situation in their heart and say, Hey, you know what? You might think that a white lie isn't that big of a deal, but these people are lying. Like they're intentionally lying to people yes. so that then they can continue. It's so. disgusting. And that's to intentionally lie, you know, like for instance, space, making everybody believe that space was real and that we're on the way to Mars and all that crap. When actually it's a fake reality they're making people believe and that's taking your freedom away. It's making you believe something that's not real. So imagine all the other things they're doing when they're not real. Oh, it's so bad. What about what about if there's more to it than that, even? And what I mean is, yes. Uh, there's we all know there's dishonest people that are far more dishonest than we would be in our own hearts like josh that's a great point that's totally true um there are people that do intentionally lie and don't feel uh the way that most people feel about it they they aren't like like when we're lying to someone when i'm lying to someone it, like it hurts and I, and there's some there's guilt and there's all these things and then there's all these it's like it just doesn't work for me but for some people that's all they do so that they, they live that life. But I think that the deception could be on a higher level and that we're all being uh, deceived. Like I'm saying uh, in particular about space, like we're all being deceived, even the astronauts. Do you know what I mean? If there are astronauts, I'm not saying that I have any knowledge, but be honest but i think i think what josh is trying to say is the time is here and the time is now yeah exactly and and we have to be that voice in the darkness whether people want to listen to us or not and that's the great thing is we as truthers right whether that be uh, veganism vaccines or chemtrails and flat earth just isn't your thing right now we have to, as a people who are waking up to what the deceptions of this earth, be the ones to go out and talk to the public. Like there are so many people that I talk to out, <laughs> out here, right? That have never heard of mud floods or fake history or the possible reset yeah, that really may or may not have gone 200 years ago. Yeah, you know, and I'm just getting into that now, right? Gay Dreamers, he's in the chat. I've been, uh, He's been doing mud floods for a couple of years now, right? Probably even more than that. Martin Liebke has been doing mud floods and I'm just getting into it now, right? So it's like, there's a progression. There's, there's like, it's not necessarily like a limited amount of knowledge that we can take in, which is why they compartmentalize everything in the educational system. Because if you have a skin rash, you don't go to a cardiologist, you go to a dermatologist, right? And the dermatologist just knows skin. And a cardiologist just knows the chest and the heart. So they can't have people who know everything. Because if you have people who know everything, then that's going to totally break the system. Because then it, it's going to provide all the knowledge to everybody to be able to heal themselves in their own home. Because then I could just go down the road and barter with somebody and say, hey, you know what? I got all these... Um, avocados right but my my wife here she has a skin rash can you help her with that you know and so we have to as a people 
wean ourselves away from the social media aspect because these privatized companies like your Facebooks, Twitters, and YouTubes have, have the quote right to um, limit the knowledge that is being put out there because they own if it. J yeah, exactly. Because if me, J dreamers and Martin can know everything about all these different conspiracies and go out to the public and yes, share divide, these, yeah. <laughs> share this stuff, then we're letting people in on the secret, you know? And I think a lot of this knowledge is, is, has been more, I mean, even, even, uh, scripture, a lot of scripture that's been discovered more recently. Um, a lot of things are being revealed and, uh, I think what Karen said, the time is now. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit frustrating. If you, I mean, like, I'm not saying that all of us aren't doing something, but someone like Josh, he goes out regularly on the streets and it's a bit like he'd like to see something moving now. But, I mean, we've got, like, um, Aaron's coming on tomorrow to talk about Project Lumen. That's a step forward. Mr. Fry's got people for people dot life. Yeah, that's still there and slowly being made. So that's another platform for the people. Um, you've got other people doing things. We have them on Sun and Moon. You've got Dave Marsh doing experiments. People are doing things. And in a sense, we have actually probably, like Ditcher was talking about it the other day, originally, a few years ago, we were always looking and only being able to answer with globe answers. Now there have been enough people researching that you can talk about flat earth ways and prove it. There's so in knowledge. A sense, Oh, we've I'm sorry. So, oh, we've just sorry. We just we have moved on quite a lot. But someone like Josh is on the streets. He knows not enough people are waking up, are they, Josh? They're not, are they? No, they're and but see, that's the thing is they're content where they're at. How is flat Earth going to pay my bills? What yeah, is it, okay, what I know about mean? what difference does it make, right? I mean, I've all, I've known the Earth is a ball this whole time, and I've been just fine. So how is this going to change my life? The only way it's going to change somebody's life is by them seeing our testimony, by them seeing how it has changed our life. And they want to, they want to right, gravitate towards that type of light and they want to be like us. So if you're behind closed doors and to you, something is sin, right? You're doing something against your own personal moral code um, which would be maybe eating ice cream or at a late night or watching too much TV when you when you just know in your heart, like, hey, I should probably shut down an hour or two before I go to bed. You know, even just little things. If you have created a law amongst in your own heart that you're disobedient against because you just want to just kind of hang out, then your testimony isn't going to be as strong. People aren't going to hear the truth coming out of your mouth and you're projecting it out. And you're I feel smile, like, man, <laughs> I love <laughs> what you're saying. I just love what you're saying. Because a lot of people, they, they have a personal moral code of what they can and can't do. Right. I, I wean myself away from coffee every once in a while, but then the last week or so I've been on like a root beer float kick. <laughs> and so yesterday I got home from work and at like five o'clock, I just had to lay down and, and just lay down and shut everything off, turn my phone onto airplane mode and kind of detox because I felt like I was putting in too much sugar and I was just kind of being, you know, just, oh, let's just eat whatever we want and just do whatever we want. So behind closed, my point is, I guess, is behind closed doors, we have to be our own testimony. So then from the inside out, we can confidently walk around in public and talk about flat earth, talk about mud floods, talk about the Tatarians, right? And the reset that went on probably 200 years ago. And we can go out there with that knowledge and then the people hear it and it hits their heart. And then that's when people are convicted because they have to have an opportunity to hear because they're not getting that opportunity through mainstream. They're not getting that opportunity tonight when they watch Thursday night football on Amazon for free, right? Oh, I got Amazon prime. So that means I can watch football f for free, right? That's what they're focused on is tonight their fantasy football team starts. And I know a lot of Christians, quote, that's all they're about. Like, I'll just settle in the grace of Jesus Christ, forgiving me of my sins, and then I'm just going to hang out, right? Just like everybody else. And it's like, as, as truthers, right, 
whether you believe in the gospel, uh, the Bible, or or a creator God, we we know in our heart that people innately are just not ready. They're just not ready for it right now. But we have to press the issue, and we have to continue to press the issue. And I don't know how long that's going to be, but you, it is a daunting task. It is. I, I, I know it's a daunting task because I see it with people. But we have to be consistent, not only in our own personal life and whichever diet it is that you feel passionate about, but you have to also go about your business in, in a caring and a compassionate way because people will see that. Josh, you are awesome. Yes, I, I think that um, most people who really think they've woken up, it's a spiritual sort of consciousness that we're moving on in. And um, that's what that's the change for now, isn't it? If we start to all think differently and start to care about each other, respect each other and be responsible for ourselves and so on, everything will start changing. I, I just love what you guys are saying. And Josh, you are so spot on, man, with with uh, like what you're saying is this is, I feel the urgency in your voice and it's amazing to me because like what I, what I read in revelation, they are not going to listen. And here's the other thing. We only have 1260 days to preach this message of truth to the world. And then it changes. That's what I believe. So whenever it started, I don't know, but we've got to be getting close to three and a half years. Sums up. I mean, yep. uh, I've been I've been looking into the mud flood thing, and, and I spoke about this last 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 Sunday about mud floods, and I really think that they have the capabilities. This is just my opinion, and just kind of where I'm led to create quicksand. You know, like they could they could uh, point kind of like what they're doing with the California fires. Now, whether you want to believe those are intentionally set or not, but let's just humor the argument and say that they are intentionally set through some kind of a microwave technology device. I also think that they're able to agitate the ground and create instant quicksand. And if you create instant quicksand from 10 feet and below, I don't know too many human beings that are 10 foot. You know, so they're all going to drown in quicksand and all of our buildings will be underground. And that could be a pretty quick way to do a reset. But I also think that in, in the 1800s, they had a lot of children working in some of these factories. And when you have, ch the, if the majority of the population is children, you're able to do a quick reset and indoctrinate that those children into a history that you want to project onto society and who will be the wiser, you know? And I do, I do think that within the next probably five years, certainly after 5G is released, I think that that's kind of the, the, the turning point once 5G by this time next year goes worldwide. Uh, I think that they're going to really start to ramp up. If not, they haven't already a lot of the stuff that they're doing. I Can think I a lot of that stuff's in the Bible, like it, like uh, the microwave, I mean, the cell towers, um, because like in, in Revelation at the end, like when wrath is getting poured out, people are getting uh, burned with extreme heat and um, like there's all these crazy things that are happening that I'm like, oh, that could easily just be like what they're using these kind of towers or this 5G or for, I don't really know much about it. But I'm just saying I can totally see those fires in California in in this story during those 1260 days. It says that uh, they can stop it from raining and, and they can uh, they I, what is it? I'll look it up. But you guys go ahead. I'll look it up and read it when I find it. I was just going to say my son's been telling me, my middle son's been telling me that basically he's just feeling that everybody's feeling that there's something wrong. They're feeling it, even if they're flat. Yeah. flat earth, the people are feeling that something, something's wrong. Something's oh, wrong with this place. <laughs> something yeah, for sure no, is wrong right. with this place. Here's that verse: If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this matter be killed. 
I'm like, when I'm seeing those fires in California, I'm like, you know, this could be something way bigger than we're thinking. You know what I mean? Like on a spiritual level, I don't know. Just, it, interesting anyway to think about because those are some weird fires. Yeah. And there's, and there's a lot of theories that are out there. I mean, a lot of people think that these fires are being used to uh, line up the San Francisco, Los Angeles train. Um, allegedly China has some correlation with California. So maybe they're the ones that are allowing this to happen where they want people to relocate and get, get out of my, get out of my state. Right. And people overseas are starting to feel you're purchase. Saying, um, I get you. You know, they're starting to purchase land here in America and they're, they're using that as an opportunity to relocate human beings because what's what's more what's easier for somebody to do your neighbor down the road to tattle on you right with your neighborhood watch or a russian or a chinese person who is from those countries part of the military comes over and kind of intimidates you well i would say that people from another country is more easy for them to come here and intimidate us as americans and get us to kind of go along with the program or you're going to disappear. I think they've already done it though, haven't they? If you imagine how many people believe in space and that we've been to the moon and stuff, they've already done it all, haven't they? They've already controlled and lied and deceived the people. They've already done it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. We all, we all a few years back before we had our eyes opened or whatever, we all worshiped a different God like we were tricked into worshiping that globe like that waking up there every day waking up on that globe every day living our entire lives all day long on that globe up in our mind mm -hmm. that's just wrong but i think also a few years ago even like in life all of us we were not talking about the things that we're talking about today and like people like josh even even joe he makes videos he does other stuff you know whoever in the chat room um um yes yeah, everybody we're spread it's the word is spreading differently now we're talking about different things mm -hmm. yeah people are with no excuse now exactly we're talking about something. Yeah. You know, people are with no excuse anymore i mean if, if something like steph curry saying that he doesn't believe that we land on the moon if somebody looks at that who's part of the world and they did previously they do believe that we did land man on the moon and they just dismiss what he's saying because of, you know, he's in a sport. He's not a scientist. What does he know? It wasn't on mainstream, so I'm not going to believe it. That's an opportunity. And they've given, they've been given that opportunity. And, and how many times can you knock on the door before your time is up? You know, Josh, you, you keep saying these words that make my make my eyes and ears. I'm like, what? What? You're saying words that are literally the same words that Jesus spoke when he was here, talking about what would happen at the end. You're saying signs these of words, the times, man. Uh, this is in John chapter 15. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. I mean, like you, you just basically said that, I mean, that's the King James weird wording, but you, you said that they can't hide behind anything because we're here. Right. And, and, and we're, we bear witness to the truth. We're testifying it. That that's exactly what Jesus said would happen. And ye shall also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. There's a little, this is deep stuff. I'm just saying the thing we're doing right now, all of us, we're doing it in righteousness no matter what the world thinks, the world's off. They don't understand what righteousness is. And so yeah. when you go when you go to a church and they're like, "Oh, you you better wear better clothes next time," or these kind of things, that's not that's not Jesus at all. He he's about truth. But yeah, I, I just, and, I, and I had that happen to me when I um, first got saved, right? Um, in 2006, actually in December, I received a Bible track in the mail and I started going to this Baptist church for a number of months. And I'd show up in clothing like this, you know, a t-shirt, pants, you know, jeans or whatever. 
And one time I show up on a Sunday and I get uh, dress trousers and a dress shirt <laughs> in, a, in a paper bag. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> so I have, there's a particular way I have to dress now, like to be accepted by these people. And I, I'm not, I'm not perfect. So I'm not going to put on this like facade of like always walking around in a suit and tie and, and then go home when I'm done and then beat the S out of my children because they took the cookies that I told them not to take. I mean, how, how that doesn't even make any sense. It's because it's truth. You, you, you're, you're not interested in putting on a charade, putting on a, fa a facade that people can't see who you are. Like you said in your presentation, you said, I don't hide my identity. That's what you said. I'm Josh. I don't hide my identity. I live in Minnesota. Where, I mean, that's, it's a perfect approach. Like you said, you're giving a testimony. You have to have everybody be able, they should be able to look at anything that you're doing and, and be like, that's the right thing to be doing. Do you know what I mean? That's just how we should be if we're going to be trying to tell anyone there's truth and that you're missing, you know, you're missing this truth. They're going to automatically think that we're being like elevating ourselves above. So we have to be really careful presenting and you're, you, you get into that a lot. I mean, you're really good at that. And I think uh, one of the, one of the more important things to address in that regard is we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You know, I've, I, I, I've done things in the past that people would be like, well, I wouldn't have done that. And it's like, well, you weren't in my situation. You haven't experienced what I experienced. So of course you wouldn't. And I probably wouldn't do a lot of the things that you've done, why you've lied or why you've stolen or why you have done this or that. And a person's experience, that's like, that's like even going so far as back, whether you want to believe it or not, eating the quote apple, right? Um, from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? Well, well, I wouldn't have done that. And it's like, <clears throat> what that story is saying is every single person here on earth would have done the same thing. So you're no better or worse than anybody else here. And I think that that's a problem for a lot of truthers is they do have a lot of things that they're not happy about that they do behind closed doors. You know, whether they drink or they smoke marijuana or they smoke cigarettes or they have a particular diet that a lot of people don't agree with. So they don't go out. And I think that the enemy of this world holds people back because of that and convicts them and says, oh, how dare you talk about this or that about mud floods with the with the public? You do this. And it's like, as long as you're, yes, you do have to try to give an attempt and, and quote, try because your, your faith shows your works and vice versa. Your works show that you're faithful. So you can fight through that, fight through the imperfections that you have and go out with confidence because you know in your heart, I mean, I think, and I'm just saying this broadly, right? But I know in my heart that the person I'm talking to isn't perfect. So for them to judge me for coming up to them and talking about, you know, flat earth and fake space and fake history, they're going to look at me and say, well, what's your degree? How long have you been going to school? What about this? And what about that? And it's like, no, 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 that has nothing to do with anything. It has to do with what is truth. Okay, and that we're being lied to. And I come across this with a lot of Christians. And a lot of Christians just stop with their faith in Jesus Christ. And then I bring up deceptions that are going on in the world. And they say, no, 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 no. Nobody would ever do that. And it's I like, have... then who's Satan? Where does Satan come in, yeah. come in to this, to your um, walk? Right? I, I mean, I've had, I've had people, even today, I've had people say, no, no, I'm saved by grace or, you know, like uh, they, they're when I bring up, well, we have a, we have a problem on our hands here, like a real problem. Every Christian that is in the world, anybody in the world that if they're believing this lie that there's some space station in heaven and where God is actually in heaven, it becomes a matter of faith. It just does. If, if, um, I think if, if a person can do, uh, can do truth, and what I mean by that is search for truth, just the matter of searching for truth, I think a person can literally 
be guided to the truth by the spirit of truth because they're searching it out and yeah i mean I, the only way that i found truth was when i got help to find it and, and i mean like like spiritual help i couldn't do them i couldn't see it myself so that's you know truth <laughs> yeah i think um what what we're coming to find out here with a lot of the truth movement is we're turning a lot of the truth movement into a religion um and i see you know and, and i see that a lot in the vegan movement i, I feel that there is um, there is uh, an emphasis on i'm more spiritual because i am a vegan well I am in a terrific spot right now. I just recently moved. I'm less than two miles away from where I start my job. And it took me four months to get to where I'm at right now in regards to a place to live where I can finally lay down in a bed and not be sleeping on somebody's couch, right? And in somebody's living room. So like yesterday when I went home and I went to bed at five o'clock after I got done with work, I could go to bed close the door and sleep and just maybe even just like sit there and think instead of being in somebody's living room and having to worry about like them kind of doing their thing and then having to wait till nine or 10 o'clock in the, at night to have finally have peace and quiet. So I'm no more less or spiritual because I do eat sushi <laughs> every Wednesday because it's on sale here in Minneapolis or if I go home and I cook um, rice and beef but also I think that it also plays into that role of you're no more or less spiritual if you're a vegan. It's how you go about it. You know, if you're going about it for spite to take pictures and post them on Facebook and say, oh, here's what I'm eating because I'm vegan and vegans rule and you're just attacking and attacking and attacking, where's the fruit in that? Like, how am I gonna, how are you gonna lead me right? Just as much as somebody leading, trying to lead somebody to Christ, how are you going to lead me to wanting to become vegan if I tell you I'm a meat, meat eater and you call me all these vile names and wish death upon me? Can oh, I say maybe Can I should I be a vegan then. Who says what God has planned for you? The creator, whatever you want to call it, where we've come from. Who says? They, he does. They do. She does. Whoever God is. Not man. Right. I think we're here to learn and appreciate love and care and community and grow together because well, we need to eat and sleep and all these things. We need to be learn to be together. Right. Everyone we has love, love everyone and has love. their own personal, uh, you know, I, some people get really strong uh, beliefs about veganism or that type of stuff. And it's it. I think have whatever belief everybody should have whatever belief that they want they should i mean we all do we all we all perceive the world we have these beliefs and we feel strongly about these things but i agree with josh is that coming out and saying oh you're different than i am in the in this area and to use that somehow uh is it doesn't even really make sense to me because we're we're talking about like uh philosophical things and and uh, supernatural things and spiritual thing. These things are, have nothing to do with, uh, what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I just bring that up and I'm not, I'm not, uh, and I respect people who are vegan. I, I, I totally get where people are coming from who have that particular viewpoint. But I also think that there is um, like the 2018 vegan documentary that just recently came out and it's only an hour long, but a majority of that hour long video has to do with global warming. So all you vegans out there, raise your hand. Okay. If you're a flat earther and you're a vegan and disagree with being a global global warmer, and I'm sure a lot of people would be. That's just like when they come out with, quote, hit pieces about flat earth. But nobody mentions the, quote, hit pieces that come out with vegan and talking about global warming. It's kind of a, 
a, a double standard, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, we're, we're a bit fed up of exclusion. Everything's about excluding. Aren't we trying to come together? Right. Everything yeah. should be out on the out in the open, like for out on a big table for everybody to walk around and look at. You know what I mean? That's what I think. Well, for sure, but also do it in a, you know, as, as human as we are, in With a judgmental love. manner. With you know, love. because it's because it's not what you put into your mouth that defiles; it's what you what comes out of it that Amen. can defile. Exactly. You know, That's so, so true. If, I can I can digest. You know, if if I turn if I turn something, I can turn anything into a religion, right? I can turn fantasy football into a religion. I can turn my work into a religion because that's just what I focus on. And if I consider it to make me a better person, then I think you're losing the whole aspect of why you are what you are and why you're choosing to do what you're doing. And I don't think that you should. I, I, that's just me. Like I I don't do things for spite. You know, I don't go out of my way to do something just to spite somebody unless it comes to, you know, buying math powerlands t-shirt. Right. But I, I think that as we continue to grow in this move, move, truth movement, I think that we're going to eventually just calm down and say, okay, what are the priorities here? Well, our children are the priority because I don't want our children to be 37 years old having to deal with the same crap because our parents and our grandparents didn't buck up and tighten their bootstraps and say, you know what? I'm not going to take this anymore. And we saw a somewhat of an interesting example over the last week with the yellow vests, right? The yellow jackets or whatever you want to call them over in France. Now, whether that's, you know, uh, paid for by the state or not, um, it does give us an idea of kind of what to expect here in America. So what do you guys think about that? I mean, Karen, you're over in that area. Do you feel like it's a, it's a quote movement from the state particularly, or do you really feel like it's a grassroots thing? I haven't been watching the news, but when I've seen a little bit on Facebook, it's a bit strange that suddenly it's like down with the globe or on some of the banners, down with globalism and stuff. But I think what it is is there hasn't been any sort of outbursts for a while around, you know, around Europe or anything. We're probably due for one, aren't we? But again, it'd be the people that are starting to do it, isn't it? People are starting to rebel. What do they expect when, you know, in Europe, for instance, they're trying to make everybody one, one government, one passport, one, one way, one, you know, law, one everything. We're not. We're all different people. I don't know because you know we don't want violence, do we? <laughs> No, we don't want violence, but you know it's that, take over. That's, so I gotta step out for a minute. Oh, okay. I yeah. um, that's that's one thing that if we if we like, I want to encourage everyone to step back away. I'm not saying like to take any different beliefs or anything. I'm just saying take all your beliefs and everything and and leave them where they're at for a second and just step back away and just look at all the people that are around you and the world and the last three years or four years of the world and just look at the, it, it was like five years ago, it was like everything was just still, nothing was happening at all. It was just still like it was dormant. And then all of a sudden, like four years, three and a half years, whatever, uh, everybody that, that we know, I mean like the people that are, a bunch of people just sprung up and now it's like this buzzing world. <laughs> Like Which all this stuff. Learn, the more we wake up, the more we learn as people, even in flat earth, we're always learning. Things keep changing. We keep getting better data. Like, do you think that the more we wake up, the worse out there is getting? It's just getting uglier and uglier anyway. It's just, it is. It's just so ugly out there. I feel like I just want to be at home all the time. But what if it was, what if it was this? Because, I, I mean, I guess there's really no way to tell what it is because we're just experiencing what we're experiencing and we're trying to just do our best to do our best. But what if it was more like all this stuff and here, this is what I'm trying to explain how I can see this world the way I see it. And, and three years, four years ago, I didn't see it. And right now I see it, but my brother who's, just the same as me or my other brother 
or my mom or my dad, you know what I'm saying? These people around me, my best friend or who, these people around me cannot see it. Even if I approach it and, and, and the conversation goes well and, and they hear me out and everything, they, it just, they cannot comprehend it. So what I'm saying is what if it's more like that all of these things that we're seeing have always been and we have just had a veil that has been lifted in the last few years, not for everybody, just for a few people that are here for a very specific reason. Could be. Yeah, I do find it's a bit strange. I just put it down. It's a bit like everybody's watching the television screen. It's just some of us can see through the screen and have the back. And, and I'm interact just with the interact with, with what's going on in the background. Like we, we actually there is one like holding the puppet there string. Is one you know, the people here in the chat room and us, we don't watch the television for a start. Yeah, I don't. Hey, Jay Dreamers, I I, I met him at the. Well, he he wouldn't remember me, but I I met you at the uh, conference. I was outside. I'm like, hey, I know you, or I've seen you on your. He was there as well, was he? Yep. Cool. He had a he had a beard though, so I didn't recognize him as well. I, I hadn't <laughs> seen I hadn't seen him with a beard before. <laughs> yeah, there's a Joe, lot of people there. Tell us where you're talking from today. <laughs> I'm at the UN. I am right. Yeah, I am at the UN. I could change. I could. I, I think I was going to have a meeting on Air Force One in a little while here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um. Yeah, it's fun playing with this thing uh, because of so, just of some of the stuff I can do. It's just so much fun. I might have to play around with the background eventually here. Um, because hey, I, you haven't done much on that lately, have you? You haven't been on the ISS much lately. Not videos. as much. Not as much. But but I, I I'm still right up there on the uh, on the results. If you search for ISS interview, you're gonna find me. I love that. <laughs> well done, so for, Joe. Uh, it, you won't find it right away, but if you go to Google videos, I think I'm there, pretty much right there. But YouTube, if you just go up to the search bar right above this video and type it in, I'm right. I'll be like the fourth or fifth person on there with my big head. It's great. I'm actually going to. Yeah, they're very good, your videos, Joe. As, as you well know, I've mirrored one or two of those, haven't I? Yeah, I love it when you mirror my videos. I, I love it when anybody them. I have 3,200 of them or something like that. That's why my joke is, well, I think only like 1,600 are public. So my kind of my joke every once in a while on Facebook, I write, still have more videos than subs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, but people may not realize you're also a researcher and you take loads of videos of the star and you've got a telescope and you look at the moon. I have some good star footage on my channel for sure. And like the eclipse, like uh, this right here. Where is it? Oh, it and might when, not. When I meet up with you, you had just done that bit where you were taking videos of the road, you know, for that sort of, I don't know yeah. what you call it. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you can't see it and then you do see it. That whatever we call it, well, they'll say it's fuel, won't it? It's fuel just burning in the heat and that's the haze you get, but it's not. Yeah, it. you know, they're, they're burning through the firmament. That's what's happening. They're like the uh, with the rockets. I'm I'm trying to. Don't worry, I'm not promoting a globe. I'm just trying to get a decent image on here if I can find it. Um, I did a video the other day where I I said I don't remember what I called it. Something about um, I'm going to prison for this video. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I got to get this closer so it looks about proportionally right there. Oh, I see. It's um, not even your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, wrong one. I, re I removed it. I was trying to remove the... Uh... Oh, I did it again. So I got kind of a funny thing. Uh, yeah, this is so much fun having this soft, this $50 software is so much fun. Um. You know, uh, I'll have to put the image up later on, but um, what I want to do is I want to like put a dummy in my chair or like a cardboard guy or something and 
just have him sit here in jail and just go live on YouTube for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> or eight hours. I can only go eight hours, I think. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, since you've been gone, since you've been gone, Josh, Joe's gone yeah. to prison. Oh, good for you, man. Yeah, they put me in here because I was preaching flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me out let me out of here <laughs> i want to get out of here i'll tell you that much it's fun it, do, it does feel like everything is wrong though doesn't it it's like we shouldn't be here because everything's wrong everything is so off you know when everything everything you know is a lie and they can't even tell us the truth about the history and the mud floods there's a pyramid 20 miles away from me can't even tell the truth about that <laughs> yeah yeah, I can I, I I certainly feel the same way in how I talk about I, I say it be, just because of my my faith and whatnot, how a lot of Christians fall in line with the whole rapture idea. And I don't. I don't want to be raptured. I want people to know what's up, or at least been given an opportunity to know what's up. And I think a lot of the people who do have the rapture idea in their mind are people who consider themselves to be Christian and they just sit on their ass all the time and they just live their life. They, they go to work. Escape. Yeah, they, they want to escape just as much as the next person. But you, know you have the truth. Like you're you're supposed to have the truth on your side and you're supposed to be out sharing that truth. And I think a lot of people stop at their faith in Christ and they just assume that everybody else is going to wake up because they woke up. And that's not how it works. You, mm -mm. you are given the spirit of truth, but the spirit of truth testifies against this world by you going out and saying, hey, you know what? Yeah, great. I'm glad that you're a believer in Jesus Christ. But do you know about mud floods? Do you know that outer space is fake? Do you know uh, about fake history? Do you know about chemtrails? Do you know about vaccines? Like all of that is truth, but a lot of people stop, you know? So I, I think that for me, I don't want to get raptured if that if that even is a concept. I, I pray and I say, God, I don't want to be raptured. I want to stay here during whatever it is that's going to come after this, whether it be a, a reset or imprisonment or, or um, I'll be a martyr for all I care. I don't care. I want people to wake up and be given the opportunity because how dare I withhold any information from somebody else when it took me 35 some years to wake up. Amen, man. I love hearing that because that, that urgency in your heart and your voice, look at that. I got three arms. That urgency is straight from the, from the Holy Spirit. Because he's saying he's been saying this. He's had you've had that urgency to project this truth into people's, you know, view so they can see it. Like that's such a strong thing, especially for you, Josh. It is like getting out there and doing that. I mean, that's there. There's nothing uh, that you could be doing more that that would be called being obedient. That's all I'm saying. You're what you're doing is you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's awesome. It's not easy, too. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not easy. But <clears throat> the name calling and um, the nights where you feel that you feel alone or whatever, how what, whatever, however you might, you're separated from your family or maybe you and your girlfriend or your wife or husband, you guys aren't getting along because of your views. What a, it's just not worth it. It's not worth going along to get along with people just to deny truth. And, you know, Christ said that he's going to come in and he did not come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And the sword is the truth, and that divides. And we're watching that happen everywhere. I mean, that that's what I see. I just see everywhere I look, there's people basically being convicted by the the word of God or or truth, basically. Being convicted Our by truth. Our families are doing it to us, aren't they? Yeah. 
it's written that they would. It's written that they'll hate us. They'll kill and us. It happens to be your the mother, sister, whatever it is, lover, whatever it is, and then they don't. <laughs> Yeah, he said he came to set a variance between mother and and daughter and father and son-in-law and what whatever all the he that's like what uh, Joshua just said about uh, I think that was Matthew ten thirty four I think that he just said about he came to came to uh, what was it Joshua I I can't remember now well he can't he can't the, you can you can yes Jesus Christ is a physical walking being like he's alive as a physical human being right now wherever maybe he's walking on the firmament i don't know that's just my opinion but the spirit of truth that is him so yes, the, the yes. truth he is truth yes so he brings that conviction to this place because a lot of i think a lot of people forget what he did here he he lived a perfect life Thank you, man. And, and so a person's faith in that is knowing that I can't be a perfect person. I'm going to cut this guy off or he cut me off. So I'm going to get angry with him. Well, how, and I don't know how Jesus did it, but he would be able to go about his business without ever thinking a negative thought towards anybody and always thinking about somebody else before himself. How many out there who are listening ever throughout the entire day, think about other people before themselves well if you feed yourself you already lost if Man, you feed I... yourself food you have already lost that battle we do feel better when we've helped someone don't we for a start <laughs> yeah right we, we Tis were the born season, to, right we were born to do this you guys like i'm not saying that we were like raised to do this i'm saying that before we were born, when we were being formed in our mother's womb, there was something written on our hearts already, but it was to remain dormant until the time when it would be revealed. Like that, what I'm saying is that there's the group of people that comes at the end of everything in the Bible, in Revelation, that group of people is here right now. And actually in this hangout i'm not boasting i'm saying word that how do i know that how do i know this it's because of all these things like what josh is talking about this truth needs to get out we only have a certain amount of time and josh is even saying i don't want to stop at that time i want to keep going i mean that that's how urgent this truth is how important it is yeah i just wonder as well i get this big feeling that um josh authentic intent is a very sensitive person so he's probably empathic and all those things how many in the chat room feel the same they're very sensitive and empathic because not everybody is a lot of people aren't or they're only empathic for themselves whereas i'm empathic for other people and that's a gift that is developed and and pruned over a period of time i think it takes a while for people to even understand what that means because they they do feel uh, at times emotional when it comes to other people or their situation and for me it has been experience you know it was me going overseas and spending nine months in Southeast Asia and seeing how people live over there having that culture shock right of leaving America with every everything that we are you know, quote, free to do here and the freedoms that go along with being an American and then going over to a, a country that is, you know, second, third world country. And it, it, you come back to America and then that's a culture shock because then you're like, you come home like me, I sat in front of a 60 inch 3d TV with surround sound and Blu-ray player and video games. And I'm just like, Ugh. I felt I felt totally this was unnecessary for me to live like this when people overseas who have very little don't need that to be happy. And that might be their environment like they never crossed paths with the opportunity to have an abundance. So they have been able to live without. But I think personally, every every American should go overseas and whether it be on a missions trip or 
you know, uh, just on a vacation, go to the slums. Don't go to, hey, where do tourists usually go? No, ask the cab driver to say, hey, how do people live here? Can you take me to uh, a street vendor and eat some dirty street vendor food and just experience what people do? And I say dirty because that's what Americans think. But most of the food that I ate when I was overseas was from street vendors. And I never had any ill effects. And I think that people who do go overseas, who do have ill effects by the food or the environment or whatever, they've already preconceived that they're going to get sick. It's kind of like, um, you know, I don't know the term, um, you know, the people that just always think they're sick all the time. You know, I, I don't know the term. Hypochondriac. Yeah, hypochondriac. Right. You know, and, and I think that a lot of people just... They just don't under. It's like uh, the meme that's going around a couple of weeks ago. Well, God really screwed up, so that's why we need to vaccinate because He created the immune system wrong. Niles on Fraser, <laughs> right? They've set out on purpose to make sure that nobody's responsible for themselves, and we're kind of on a nanny state because obviously we don't grow our own vegetables. We go to the supermarket. I'm just as bad, and. I'm probably the generation they went for the most on that because everything's pla wrapped in plastic, isn't it? Um, yeah, just food is something else, isn't it? I yeah, what a detriment to society. What's that? Plastic. What a what a detriment to society plastic is. Yeah. Um, I is saw that... this uh, this news article a couple of days ago where it speaks to the uh, effect of. Um, People are pooping plastic now. So think about that. It's taken 10 to 20 years of plastic just basically taking over the earth. And there's so much plastic in the foods that we eat and canned lining foods. Um, the fruit, I got fruit right here, um, pre-sliced fruit. It's in a plastic container. So on a, on a microscopic level, somehow that plastic is getting into my food. And now we're all just now we all have plastic in our bodies. I think it's a lot a lot of this stuff. Okay, chemtrails is another example of something that even as a truth community or whatever you want to call it, the people that do know the most about what is happening with that, there's still a big huge question on what is actually happening when that we're alerted to. Because I believe that we're alerted to a lot of these things in our hearts before we find any that. evidence or anything. Do you know what I mean? I, I feel like, um, uh, well, that, that would be one. When I look up and I see jets doing those streaks and, and all these, and the sky's like this blue and then this white. And um, I'm like, okay, yeah, that could be a cloud. Yeah, but it's not a cloud. And, you know, it, oh, that's just from the hot air coming out of the jets. And all, there's all these excuses. I'll say, you know, I used to play uh, Dukes of Hazard on my big wheel when I was five years old. And they didn't, they weren't up there. There was jets up there, but there was none of these white lines like this. Not, not in 1982. They weren't there. And so whatever's changed, I think it's just part of this end this end goal that these evil fallen angels have. They want to break into this world and that's how they're doing it with, I think the chemtrails have a large part to do with what we read in the Bible when it says the sky rolls back like a scroll and the stars fall like figs from a, or like untimely figs from a fig tree. I'm just saying there, there's no coincidence. Is there? I mean, what, no, what are they doing to the sky? So I did a video a couple of days ago on Sunday, and I don't think I've seen any flat earther who is interested in exploration break down the numbers of how much it would cost for us to do a grassroots exploration expedition to the North or South Pole. I see Math Powerland go on and on about, you know, exploration to Antarctica. I, I see other people do exploration to the North or the South Pole. If Math Powerland put all his t-shirts together and created a sale 
to go to Antarctica, all of his remaining t-shirts, I think we would fund his project. You know, you've become a t-shirt salesman and you haven't put a money of how much is a cost for us as a grassroots people to go to Antarctica. All I see is people just selling paraphernalia all the time. Well, what I did is I broke down the numbers and on this video that I did on Sunday <clears throat> and I came up with about 10 to 15 million dollars for us to fund a trip and half of that money or over 70% of that money ship. So if we want to, if we want to, you know, start a GoFund like that, we need at least dollars to do exploration. And then you need to fund on it. The ship needs to be 24 hours a day. So you need to have at least eight people 24 hours a day running that personnel. And every time I watch Josh, you're breaking up just a little bit. It's about I'm sorry, hello? Sorry, just yeah, breaking just, up I'm, a little bit. Uh, hope he's back. Um, but I, I'm just trying to give people to an idea of how much it would really cost for a grassroots movement to do exploration. And personally, now that I've seen like the fake history and I've seen the, the maps from the 1800s and the 1600s, we need to, to be honest with you, I think we need to start exploring our own land here within the pond that we live on because they're removing land on the new on the current maps right now. And they're saying, oh, nope, it's just all water now. I mean, geez, by the time they're done removing all the land on the maps that we have, it's going to the earth is going to be 90 percent water. And 10% land. Whereas, you know, we go around and say, oh, the earth is 71% water, so how can it be a ball? Well, look at the current maps right now. They keep removing land masses all the time. And they make it think they make it seem like, oh, nope, there goes that land. Nope, nope, there goes that land. So yeah, we have fossil fuels. So now we have to deal with, you know, gasoline and oil and, and we're just running out of fresh water. And we need to, as a people, stand up to that. Like, how are you? How dare it's just you? All, it's just this. all garbage that they're trying to that, that they put they they put these ideas there to uh, to control. That's really all they're they're there for. Like global stuff, anything global is there to control. You know, that's my. I mean, that's what I see anyway. I think I think Josh is really right. I've thought that for a long time. Instead of you know pretending that we're going up, we need to go down. Yeah, yeah that's like when need... you ask. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Say that again, Josh. You know, it just needs to be. It needs to be addressed, and I'm ready to 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 go about it. I'm I'm ready to die for truth. I'm ready to go to jail for it. If that's what it takes, I'm just some guy in Minnesota and I'll go to jail and, and people will be like, oh, well, that's what you get for. That's what you Again, get. For we're taught crazy. in education and they talk me. But I'm I'm a testimony against this place. You're doing it. Uh, you're and doing I to walk it. in. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Josh. I'm sorry. No, I just I just try to walk in righteousness and in, in truth against this place and if anybody disagrees with it then you need to check your own about what it is that you're believe yeah. i think uh i think Breaking you're right up but yeah it, it we just break up a little yeah. bit but um but i think i got i think i got the idea of what you're saying is the truth is uh, in 2018, the truth is the most important thing that anybody could seek out. That that's what I say. And however they get there, that's why we're all out here doing, you know, basically spreading. Even if even if we're not talking about a specific truth, we are talking about the deception that this world uh, fell for before we got here. You know, it's not like it's not like it's our fault that we believe we were on a globe our whole lives. 
that's what we were taught when we were four years old. What else are we going to believe? You know, um, I, I just think that it, it's been hidden from us. We can't, and I don't mean by men, I mean, spiritually been hidden from us for this time, for this time right now. Um, what Josh said is so right on when he said it, it is his spirit. It's the spirit of truth. It's Jesus that is actually enabling us to see the things that we couldn't see before. And it's so real, isn't it? It is a bit strange though, isn't it? We can talk about all different kinds of religion. You know, when you even say, I went to college to be a receptionist. We learned all these different ways that did, they didn't use anymore, but all these different systems. So what was the fear of ever mentioning flat earth? Uh, they could have said, well, this is how people used to think. So why are they trying to just omit the whole thing? So well, I think that that's, uh, they, people are doing that without knowing it. Uh, remember the, I think it was um, D Marble, I think put a video on Facebook. I think it was him of, of something. I think it was probably a recent thing, but a, a teacher in a, like a kindergarten class or first grade, yeah, kindergarten was sitting there with the globe and there was maybe three, four kids around and started to explain some things about the globe. And one or two of the little kids were like, no, 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 that's fake. And when I see that, I, first of all, it gives me like the happiest feeling ever when I hear when I hear little kids saying that, no, 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 the globe is a lie. There's nothing better that, that for a child to know. Um, but oh, I forgot what I was going to say about that now. I don't know. These these th these lies aren't aren't uh, going to be told for very long. We're stopping that. It is evil, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's evil what they've done. It's just absolute evil to make this great big matrix where you almost can't get to the end of it because it's such a big matrix and it's full of so many lies. But it's, it's a matrix. Lies, it's not even by accident. It's a system specially set up to control the people. Yeah, and it's set up. But but the thing is, you know how in Satan is the ruler of this world or he has the power over the air or whatever. That's so literally true. And, and now we have the eyes to see so what i'm saying is there's like this thick layer of dominion that uh we used to be underneath it like in this like in prison and then we removed it out, out and we looked up do you know what i mean we're like whoa there's a whole world of truth out here and that dominion is about up and that's we're we're actually right now as i'm speaking we're in a spiritual battle and, and that Michael and his angels are fighting against Satan and his angels. And we can even visually watch that when we watch yeah, rocket now launch. We're persecuted. Now we're the persecuted. Yeah. Well, and then what, uh, what happened or what's bound on the earth is bound in heaven and what's loosed on the earth is loosed in heaven. It's like these two worlds kind of go along together. Not that, not in the same way, but I'm saying that, when I say, when I, when Josh is on the street and me and Josh go get coffee at wherever it was. And, uh, and I had my camera with, and so we were done with coffee. We went out the parking lot. He's like, Hey, let's look at the moon through that camera. And so we, we started doing that. Next thing, you know, convertible Mustang pulls up and we're talking to these two gentlemen about flat earth and what just happened right there when me and Josh had that conversation with those two guys, because those two guys listened big time. And, and it's all because of Josh. Cause I'm just not very as good at these things, but I, and, and I even like interrupted Josh and like, and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> you go, Josh, t tell him his Josh is just really, he has a knack for it. But um, what just happened in that parking lot at that coffee joint is eight angels that are fighting the battle in heaven. They just got bound. And so Michael just, move forward advanced so th what i'm saying is the spiritual battle is very real and we are literally on the front lines right now and by the way i gotta mention we are really killing it <laughs> we're winning and in the end we win so flat earth wins against still not enough people waking up yet though are they and i'm not sure if they will because you know, well, why did we why did we all wake up up and the majority of us not everyone some people never lost it from being a child some people realized as they were growing up that this wasn't right some people it was 2015 2016 but that was the biggest wake up 
that that I think is when God made a move and and like literally came and filled us up, poured his spirit out on us because it, to me there's no other explanation. I didn't just change. Something came and helped me. And then when I read in when I read what Jesus said, Jesus is like, "Hey, in 2000 years I'm going to well, he didn't say that. He didn't say in 2000 years, but he said, "I'm going to pray the Father that he will send you a comforter. I, he's like, I won't leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. And then he says, and when, when, the, when he does, the spirit of truth is who I'm going to send. And that's, he's going to guide you into all truth and the truth will set you free. I'm like, if anybody denies that Jesus knew that and that he was saying that that was going to happen, well, keep reading because Jesus says, I'm saying this now, this is 2,000 years ago he's saying this, I'm saying this now so that when it comes to pass and, and I'm in you and you in me, then you'll believe. I'm like, that's so important for people to know and it's just written right in, in the Gospels. He says it, Jesus' own words. He says, you're going to have to testify for me. I'm like, I, I didn't realize this till very recently that that literally if you if you go to the Gospels, I, I love the Gospel of John is, is one that it, it seems like he's talking about the Spirit. He's explaining our lives and this thing we're experiencing right in, in chapters 13, 14, 15, 16. He says, whoever receives whomsoever I send. He didn't really say anything but that he was sending the Spirit of truth. He said, whoever receives whomsoever I send, just like Josh said, is receiving me. Flat earth is, I'm not saying the ground is Jesus, but I'm saying truth is Jesus. I, I shouldn't say just yeah. like truth. Is, something, it, else, something else is happening though, isn't it as well? It's like generally we, the people who are really waking up have different kind of egos. It's, it's not got that, there's, there's a certain kind of ego and arrogance. I'm sure in the chat room, who's going to answer in the chat room? That under, understand I understand what, what I mean. It, it's almost like a, like an undesirable, you're saying, undesirable arrogance. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Some it's like it's because it's know. written in their hearts and they know it. And so around if they don't understand what's happening and and like Josh has a good understanding of what we're doing here, what what the goal is or what the I mean Karen, you know what we're, we're preaching truth. Well, there I think it's maybe even more younger people that um they have this truth and they understand this and it's written on their heart what they're doing is they're becoming frustrated because they don't understand this thing that's happening. And they, and we all want to know what's happening in our lives. And we really do. And like when, when someone, I think it's a lot of times like on Facebook, I run into younger people and, uh, and they're the sweetest, nicest people, but, um, but they think everyone around them is just utterly stupid because they can't figure this simple thing out and they don't know that it's hidden from the people around them. So that can cause a lot of problems. And, and like, it can make a person angry, but I've, I've met several of these people. Like I, I taunt them sometimes. And then I'll, then I'll tell them, send me a private message and I want to talk to you about it. And then in, in private, in private, they're a lot more open to understanding, okay, something's happening here. And I understand that if you don't know what it is, it's going to suck. <laughs> if, you know, if you just all of a sudden had all this going on, and you didn't understand that it was something that God was doing. Um, how how do you take that? How do you? Am I going insane? Like, am I? Is yeah, is everybody they, around me stopping? <laughs> you know, kind of waking up. They've made fun of all the people we want the information from, like say the Native Americans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we're all crying for their kind of information. At least they've got a history and a background. We don't have one anymore. It's been changed, altered, lied about. We can't even say how old the Bible is anymore. How can we? History is a lie. All of it's a lie. So basically, we're living. So we don't even know where we're living and what we're really living on. But we have to, <laughs> so that is it's really bad. Like, like what? Is, you know, anyway, but we have to try and move on and just move on as best as possible, living in this tool. Hopefully, in our our lifetime, someone can show us. It'll be a lot quicker than our lifetime. It's you guys. I'm talking a short amount of time. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm never gonna put. How much like, more can they cover this up? Well, 
and they it's not covered up is it there's so a I, person like us at, in every city that's like uh no <laughs> So can I, just I, I, think it's that, can I just explain that Josh isn't there at the moment. He's in and out a bit because he's still at work. Oh, oh no, okay. I'm I'm here. Oh, oh, you're there. I'm just. Oh yeah, I'm just listening. Um, I I do. There are, there are truthers out there, and again, I say truthers. Um, and I and I say that whether you're flatter, I don't just mean flatter. There's, I mean, anti-vax and you know vegans and. You know, people who feel led to th and how they need to live their life and then uh, offer that information to other people. And I think that if, if for me, like my conviction is I want to give people an opportunity to hear both sides. Now, whether that means three or four different sides to have all the options given to you, your own personal worldview and experience will then reveal what is true to you and you might be deceived i mean even some truthers are still deceived and i think that is a it is a process like over a period of time it's like what paul says i mean work your your faith out in fear and trembling and we need to continue to seek things out now whether that be uh, like again flat earth or not we need to understand that if if you're a flat earther and you were deceived for as many decades as you've been deceived, that means that there's more out there. <laughs> so flat earth just isn't the end all to be all. Knowing Jesus isn't the end all to be all. There's more to the story. And well, we're part of the story even, you know? Well, some people are. Some people just sit online and watch and just <laughs> soak up all the truth and all the videos and all the different uh, truther videos that there are, and they don't do anything with it because they're afraid. Uh, they have a sense of fear because they don't want to be ostracized from their fr family, friends, and coworkers, and maybe even lose their job. And that's where, you know, when I did the presentation in Denver, you have to, we have to have courage. Courage means knowing that there is fear and that there is the unknown but continuing to move forward anyways. Knowing that persecution. That's what courage is. Uh, yes. Knowing, that, knowing. Yeah, it's coming and I can handle it. That's what, that's what I've learned in the last just few months. I've learned um, there is a way, and Josh, you're a pro at this, man. I love what you say about this, but there's a way to have a conversation with everybody that you talk to. That's if it's not fruitful, it doesn't have to be anti-fruitful. Like there is a way to, to, uh, discuss these things without um, letting that spirit of whatever take over. You know what I mean? Like that, even if, because people get very angry. <laughs> well, because you're attacking their own personal knowledge of what they think about this place and their worldview and their experiences. Most people who live in the matrix, right, have this idea that the people whom they voted in whom they've learned from professors and scientists and so on, wouldn't lie to them. And most of those people, you're right, they wouldn't lie. But they've also been educated by uh, the foundation of, of a lie. And they have ignorantly continued to project that ideology through education. Because if you're educated, then that means you're smart. Well, no, it just means that you're really good at memorization and then regurgitating what you've learned. That has uh, edu Your education has nothing to do with your intelligence. It has everything to do with being able to memorize things. It's like you patriotism know? towards a, a team. Like what? Yeah, what right. Yeah, you have a bias. Yeah. You know, and so if you have a biased worldview or a story, a, a narrative that's been given out, and you refuse to listen and take in anything that goes against that narrative, you're in a religion. You know, I mean, and as, as harsh as that might sound, a lot of Christians are afraid to listen to anything that has to do with going against the common narrative because then they go to Romans 13 and say, 
well, God instituted all these govern governments and these people to be in power. So if God put these people in power, then that means that that's right. Well, he also allowed Pharaoh to be in power, right? And he used Pharaoh as a means to show positives and negatives about his treatment of his people, the Israelites. Yeah, yeah. I think you're you're you make a good point. Um, God does things that we like. They're definitely things that are that have to be done or whatever because God did them or whatever. But like you said, um, it's not always going to be something we can interpret in the moment or, or as something happens in our life or something that we can interpret it as, well, that's a good thing. God said, it might not feel good or seem good at the moment, but if we're, if we're, if we follow through with what he's showing us by his spirit, um, I'm learning now that we are just about to the, to our goal is what I'm going to say. And I'm not saying that we've reached enough people, but that there's a time that that's going to be cut off whether we want to or not. It's we're going to be cut off because of how the world is not receiving it. It's a scary thing. <laughs> mm. I said this bit though, we've got to the bit where everything's been about segregating, and we don't, I think that's what he's meaning is when we don't want to try not to segregate us anymore. We're not, it's, it's, it's been, you know, nobody cares about each other anymore. No one. No one likes each other. No one talks to each other. Families, we're all fighting. Love grown cold? That Jesus said love would grow very cold or something. <sighs> well, I can feel it. I don't know about <laughs> anybody else. That room. Can you feel Everyone it? can. Uh, well, they can't feel it. They just are like, they don't understand it. They're like, well, what is wrong with that guy? Or what is, he must be going through something these last three years that he's been shouting. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they, to them, it's just not a, a real thing. And that's how it was written. It was going to be too, as in the days of Noah, people, people are going to be clueless. They don't know what's coming. It's sad, but it's because they love light came into the world. It's here right now. Light came into the world and they love darkness more than they, because their deeds were evil. <laughs> we didn't know it. A lot of people love this world. They get enveloped by the physical and even, you know, quote, Christians fall into that trap and they have this preconceived notion that, well, I'm not a bad person. So that means everybody else is a good person and nobody would ever orchestrate a lie for hundreds of years to deceive me and create an environment whose foundation is built on a lie and history wouldn't be covered up. And, you know, I, I still, you know, and, and again, you know, it goes back to truth. I still think the foundational message of the Bible is true. Now, whether people want to say, well, this was manipulated translations, words were taken out and so on and so on. Um, you know, I could, I could agree to, have my own viewpoints on that, but I still think that the foundational idea of the Bible is person as a man lived a perfect life and died for our sins. And I, I don't think a lot of people want to believe that because that's a gift. A lot of because they work at their job and they see the fruits of their label, labor, which is money in monetization, so that then they can buy stuff here. Um, nobody would ever, you can't be gifted something as powerful as that. And I think that that's where a lot of people, like, they feel like they have to work for their, their, uh, for their creator to get some kind of reward. And, and that might just be where it ends. Well, that's the beauty of how how Jesus, what he did 2,000 years ago, like you were just saying, where it's not, it's not that that's an, back to like the following the Torah and all that. Stuff. That isn't isn't a, isn't what brings us salvation. Salvation comes by having his spirit in us, you know. And so I, I think like being freed 
from our our the the lust of the flesh or whatever our bodies our our physical bodies being freed from uh that bondage that you know like someone like if someone was going to steal something because there was some cash sitting there or whatever it, it to me it's like uh i wouldn't i think uh, that the people that are seeing truth wouldn't do that anymore they would kind of go no no that's not going to help anybody out <laughs> you know but not, not so, uh, yeah, everybody no, someone else is joining the hangout. Greetings. Uh oh. Uh, it's it's Hori. Hello, everybody. Hori. Oh, that is cool. Here. How are you doing, Hori? Doing Hello, good. Hori. That's quite dramatic. It's quite dramatic. Let me uh, let me spice it up a little bit here. I'm just gonna mute and hang out with my little uh, alien bugs oh. over here. Uh, you're gonna wait. You're gonna what? <laughs> there you go, I'm Karen. I'm just gonna hang uh, with my tether. Cool. Hey, what's up, man? You know, hey, what thank you, Josh. Yeah, oh you yeah, made you made yeah. each other. Haven't you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Uh, just coming on here in here to say hi and and let me spice it up a little bit. Like how you like that one, Karen? Like that. <laughs> You'll set Joe off. Joe will be doing the backgrounds on his now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give him some ideas with this one. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do this to catch some eyes now when I'm flat smacking. Every now and then, I just get in, in those weird moods to just to just blow people's minds on a different level. So I blow people's minds with the visuals, and then I start talking about Flat Earth now. So you'll catch me doing this on, uh, on chat uh, chat roulette. Like a character, man. Yeah, no. You like show up at everywhere, like a superhero. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, they, they're not ready for this. I, I'll <laughs> I'll show up, I'll show up like this, and then I'll I'll summon the smoke from this side of the screen, and then I'll look over here and summon some smoke from from this side of the screen, and then and then that's what they get to watch. They just that's how I start off. I just stare at them, you know. <laughs> Freaks them out. Yeah, I like it. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'll I'll change the I'll just change the background up, you know, every now and then. And uh they, they don't know what the hell's going on. Or or I'll start off like uh sometimes I'll start off just like hold on. I don't normally do it with the headphones like this. But I'll start off just simple in the uh in the living room set you know and then out of nowhere i'll try i'll try as craftily as possible to uh to say oh well hold on i'll i'll be right back or whatever uh wait i gotta get set up first i didn't realize how how difficult it is for me to to actually set it up like this yeah, so I'll tell people, all right, uh, I'll be, I'll be right back, and then I'll put on my headphones or whatever, and I'll go down, and I'll try to, I'll try to do it. I know you could still see me right now, but I'll be off camera. I'll be like, I'll be like off way over here, and I'll be clicking the screen, and I'll just come back. And, you have it uh, set up. Yeah, bam! I'll just have it all set up. Like, oh, I'll, cool. I'll just pop back and go. Just psh, everything will just change, and they'll be like, what? What the hell is this now? Yeah, you know, it just blows people away. Like from the living room to to this. Especially if you can keep talking. Transition. Like if yeah, you can keep keep the sentence going or whatever. Yeah, I have the I have the like the monitor over there usually and um and I'm I'm about ready to click everything and I'm sometimes I have it even set up to do this. Oh no, I don't have it. I have the uh the beach stinger background that clamps down. So it's like <laughs> that transition. And so then they think I'm a, uh, a lot of them will think I'm just CGI and they'll give me the, the, the test. They'll be like, do this, bro. Do, do, do this. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do, I'll do that. And they'll go, Oh, yeah, I'll freak out. <laughs> Hold up two fingers, three fingers. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's great. It is. Then you flat smack them. You're like, Oh, world's flat. You guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway. Just a minute ago, um, Josh was sort of talking about the fact that he'd like things to change. But in a sense, you've all met each other now properly, haven't you? If you hadn't met authentic uh, Josh before, you've met 
I mean, I mean, um, hoary. So that's really good. It is slowly changing, isn't it, guys? Come on, it is. Oh yeah. All right, yeah, we're, we, we're all know, we know we're, we're real people, you know, and we 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 can see that there are different avenues for sharing truth and for sharing opinions and, you know, because we do, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, live in an age that is very electronic and social media uh, grown. And I do see that as a positive and a negative because there can be the negative side where we're losing the interaction of being who we really are and that's human beings touch and uh being able to because i think that using the media the medium of social media even through that we can lose the conveyance of our voice and our intent and how we really are trying to project our message and it's becoming digitalized and I say that, um, for example, there's a lot of people, and I do say a lot because I do think that there are multiple channels out there who use voice modification. And you know, you'll 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 you'll, you'll, you'll be listening to somebody who sounds like another person, and you'll be like, no, that can't be them. They can't have three different channels, and then they all sound the same. But it really is the same person and they're just using a voice mod. And what yeah. that does is if if you're using a voice mod, you're losing the authenticity of your message because it doesn't sound like truth. Like if I was to have my channel, for example, and and people agree with you know some of the stuff and don't agree with other stuff, for example, and then I come out with the channel that is totally negative about what's going on or or I'm a globe pusher or whatever and I'm using a voice mod and then think that that's truth but then I'm but then I'm speaking out the other side of my mouth because then I'm using my real voice through the interwebs and I, I don't know I'm just starting to kind of get that feeling that people are are being more convinced by what they hear and uh, see online than if it was something that they would hear in person. I, I don't know. I hope I'm not confusing people, but there is there is that aspect of using internet manipulation to try to convey your message where you wouldn't be able to. I think people are I'm basically I'm just saying that people are becoming more and more dependent on technology than being able to go out in public and convey the same message. And I think people would get tripped up and I'm not trying to, you know, say anything negative towards people who do use green screens and uh, video and so on. But if you're so confident about conveying your message online, would you be able to use the same information talking to somebody out in public? That's a good point. And, and, Josh, I know exactly what you're saying. You're, you're not ripping on people that are that are not going out. You're encouraging people to go out. Now, I can speak firsthand because I've been actually only once, but I've been, I've watched Josh doing his thing. Um, and for for me, I, I'm not as comfortable. Um, I'm not as comfortable as you were, Josh. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not saying you're better. I'm worse, or I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying that I wasn't as comfortable as you were. You were like, no, no, let's talk about this. Let's talk. Like you knew exactly where to go, and you had these guys who were they were what they were commercial builders, and they were uh, right. I think they were commercial builders. And yeah, they. Yeah, yep. They were very intrigued by what you were saying, and so uh, I've been wearing. I've been wearing this around to the everywhere I go, pretty much the stores and stuff. And it does bring up a lot of conversations. So I'm getting better, <laughs> but I know what you're saying for sure. There's a different element of when, when those guys went home that night, I guarantee you that they were thinking about what Josh was saying and the, the truth that was, that was being shown to them in that parking lot. They weren't, if you do, you might not get that way with a video online. You know, you might watch a video and it might not affect your your 
day quite like a real person standing there giving you their testimony. Hmm. Yeah, well, we're all helping as we can, can't we, in our own way. We've got a yellow hoary now. I like to think that uh, we are all doing our own our own thing. So it, it just makes my heart beat so nicely when I feel like everybody's doing their part, right? You like, you like that, Joe? I got the UN covered. I'm speaking there. So uh, is this mic working? Yeah. Um, maybe. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Do you prefer me in the green or uh, the gold, the golden mask or red? I do all kinds of stuff. I just, I just, you know, I'm just, just playing around with OBS and I'm learning all kinds of different things that I can do. But uh, it's, it's really interesting. So this What's is your new flat packing, is it? You're gonna, you're dressed like that then, Hori? Yeah, it's like I'm some kind of like, freaking, evil villain, uh, and Crack and, a window, and you know. Dude. They have no idea what the hell they're, they don't know what the hell they're in for when I'm just, you know, I'm there. I, I might even get in the, uh, sometimes I'm in the Jack Skellington onesie because, uh, look, it's got, hold on. Oh, man, this thing is really tight on me. Let me see if I can take it off. The onesie is black and white and all stripey. So oh. it's really cool looking. I think I saw you in that and you had the whole screen was doing like a twist thing, yeah. right? Yeah, that's cool. My pants kind of. <laughs> oh, now I got to untangle this. I can't hear anybody. Uh -oh. ah. It's all the smoke in there. He can't see what he's doing. Anyway, Hori, <laughs> you, enjoy, you enjoyed the conference, did you? Because I haven't spoken to you since. Me? Yeah, I did. I've spoken oh, yeah. to. Oh, I had, I had a, I had a blast at the conference. I really did. Um, I stayed up for like two, two days at some point <laughs> at the conference. There was a lot of people there who knew truth, and that was just super. Had a super huge effect on me when I was just be walking through that hallway or wherever. And anybody that I, you know, walked up to, came across, like half the people I knew already, but just to be there, something very positive about truth and the people that spread it. Did you um, all stay in the hotel That's... there then? Did you stay there, Josh? Uh, the Crown. The Crown Plaza, right, wasn't it? Yeah, I just call it the Crown Royale with cheese. <laughs> Crown Royale with cheese. <laughs> Did you stay there as well then, Joe? I stayed, uh, I forgot what it was called. The one next door. What was that? Uh, I don't remember what it was called. Uh, it was all is that, That's why you weren't in my room for the lemon drop martinis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me know now. I'm just kidding. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, Man. it was... Uh, I, I was actually tired. The I I drove, well, nine hundred miles or whatever to get there, and um, I did it like I like right before, so I had like four hours of sleep at a truck stop in my truck uh, before the morning that I got there. You know what I mean? So I like by that time at night at ten o'clock at night, I was barely keeping my eyes open. I was just exhausted. It's a long drive. Oh yeah, absolutely. How long did you? Think I, how long did you? Stay? Oh, carry on. No, carry on, Josh. Go for it. Go for it, Josh. Oh, I was just gonna say uh, um, about with all truthers in in. I wonder what it's for the to know. To be around each other, you know, and I say that like this: We're, most of the people here in the college in the last three or four years. 
Hey, Josh, you're cutting out super bad. Yeah. You're going to probably have to repeat all that for us. Can you Driving do us? Um, yeah. Yeah, say it again, Josh. Yeah, all that. you got to start all over. <laughs> I'd have lost him. Maybe he'll get into a better. He was go, driving, did he say? Yeah, yeah, I'm driving. So go ahead and talk. Go ahead and talk. I think I know what kind of what he was saying. He was saying something about when you get that many people who are. He, he was kind of talking about that, I think, but I couldn't hear what what he was say, uh, saying about it. I'm not exactly sure where he was going with it yet. Yeah, go ahead and talk. I'll I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're sounding all right now. Do you want to say it now? We sound okay now. Yeah, I was just um, kind of saying that all, let's just, let's call them like elites or, you know, the celebrities and the politicians and whatnot. They're already privy to this truth about chemtrails and fake history and, you know, flat earth and whatnot. I wonder what they think about us getting together like that and kind of having this giddy feeling about, oh yeah, it's so great being surrounded by all these truthers, you know, and having all the people. But they've already been in the game for decades and decades, right? And so I'm just curious to know what you guys think of, of what else is there. Like, if, if we can get all giddy about Flat Earth and, and joining up in regards to that, we're still in the dark, you know, there's, you know, us quote flat earthers, we're in the dark about a lot of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. So have you guys ever thought about that? Like, you know, these people know all this stuff way before we have. I don't think myself, I'm just giving my quick opinion. I don't think anybody in the world is, has the knowledge of flat earth, uh, except for the people like us that are actually trying to spread it. That's just my take, and I know a lot of people disagree with that, but I, I don't see um, any evidence of that. Uh, yes, I, there's a lot of information about the Earth being flat, but but I, I guess what I'm saying is the uh, the recent three years, I think, is um, it's being revealed, and I, I don't think that has anything to do with any people, myself. Mm. Oh, we've lost. Oh, no, who have we lost? Oh, we've lost Patricia. Mm. What do you think about that, Karen? Do you think that there are people out there who know the Earth is flat, and they they're looking at us as if like, oh, well, welcome to the party. I think that if you've really woken up, there's no taking the Mickey. We, like. We don't mean to be, but we're all quite serious. I mean, Hori's funny, but he's still serious. Serious. Joe's serious. You're serious. I try and make it a bit lighthearted, but I'm serious. How many people in the chat room? Marilyn, um, spirit level. She's serious. This isn't a joke, is it? We're not joking. I don't. I don't think if you've really, if they were really, if everybody's awake, everybody's welcoming. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I actually find that this is the only way I can have conversations with people on chat roulette. If I'm just sitting in my like living room background, I get skipped 100% of the time. Like nobody really wants to sit there and really talk. <laughs> so I have to really grab them with the visuals. Uh, I get so much more interaction with this. So can I just say sorry, Corey, two <laughs> seconds before it goes. Paul on the plane is in the chat room and he says it's not a joke. Carry on, Hori. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. <laughs> Looking at like at Joe over there. I'm shaking uh, these bars before we get off off the air carriage. <laughs> You've got to get out of prison. Let me out <laughs> I just yeah. I have so much fun. <laughs> I think it makes a difference when you are out in the street, isn't it? Like like Josh, and you do it a slightly different way, Hori, because you're you're seeing that a lot of people still aren't waking up, are they? No, um, they're not. That they, they a lot of people I'm finding out they've heard about flat Earth, but they're not. Um, uh, they're not they really looking search. into it. 
But yeah, they didn't they didn't really start doing research yet, you know. And some of these people, their opinions can be swayed a little because some of them, uh, they, they've heard about it from a couple of people and they haven't looked at it at all. And those are good. But some of the people are like, oh, well, I saw, you know, Vsauce's video and Vsauce debunked it. And it's like, oh, uh, yeah, but you see, and then I can help say no flat earther thinks that the earth rotates. And Vsauce's whole video is based on the, the freaking earth right. rotating. Yep. So I'm like, dude, no, no, no. No flat earther thinks that the earth is rotating like a, a spinning ball. So we're going up people, like this all the time. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, we, we're not we're not rising and rising and rising to to the beat of what is it? Uh, Nine point eight three two, whatever. Yeah, whatever speed. Yeah, so and when, when when they hear that, they go, oh, so you don't think that? I'm like, no, nobody does. That's a scam. And then. Oh, and that that'll get them looking into it again, you know. So, a lot of Isn't people crazy are crazy how looking, you know, they've heard about it already. I yeah, I've just I I met a lot of people that because a lot of people when I'm when I'm wearing this shirt, a lot of people say, like this is what they say to me all the time. Does it really say that? Does it really say that? Like mm -hmm. the Bible says flat Earth, and I'll be like, I'll just point them to Nathan's website. I'll be like flatearthdoctrine.com. 240 Bible verses right there. Go look at them, you know, but it gets people looking. It gets people like people don't walk by this shirt without either like giving it a second look or they didn't see it at all. But when they see it, 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 it like not triggers them, but it triggers something in them where they're like, Hey, wait, 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 what are you, what does that shirt mean? Bible says flatter. Like they'll ask a lot of people have asked me or check out counter people ask, you know what I mean? When you're, around people but so that's why like i've been wearing it ever since the conference i've worn it worn it a ton i love it <laughs> you know what's funny um, about the vsauce hmm. thing is you know when i'm out talking to people out in public and they ask me for my credentials you know i'm i'm just like well you know what what does that validate i mean really but they'll take a vsauce video that debunks flat earth who the hell is vsauce <laughs> right? I mean, so the, they'll use Vsauce or some celebrity um, schmuck on YouTube that debunks Flat Earth, but then they won't listen to somebody who has done, you know, experiments or observations. I mean, it, it's simple things. Like, you can go out and to a lake, a, a large body of water during the sunset and see the sun ray come to your feet at the shore knowing full well that if you were to do that on a ball, the sun ray would stop halfway because the, the water would be curved. And so, I mean, that, that's a simple observation that our creator has given us to know that we live on a level, non-spinning, non-spherical plane. But, you know, these, these people can say, well, I watched um, Mick West debunk it well who the hell is mick west he just runs some website and you know he's being debunked right now as we speak um that people in the community have brought up some you know funny business that you know him and uh, his cronies are into right now so that's another thing so just something to think about when you do come across people that say well i saw a vsauce video debunk flat earth then say okay well what is vsauce's credentials then mm-hmm Sometimes um, it's not really for, about credentials with people. They just they just will believe anything if it's well filmed, or if it's if it's just high quality HD footage, you know. And and that's a that's a thing that's I think a subliminal um, problem, <laughs> um, because look how well the look how look how choreographed the news is. Hell, look how choreographed like sports and stuff is. Uh, all the Sports Center stuff on ESPN, all that stuff. I mean, like that, that's all, there's a certain way to film things and it gives you a certain bit of credit, a certain bit of credibility. And, uh, and when that trickles on into uh, conspiracy theory land or debunking it, um, it will weigh in and, and certain videos will, will make you believe them versus other videos just on how they're filmed. And 
it's a problem. People need to do their own research. That's why it's important to start um, getting out all these laser experiments. Um, the long distance laser experiments are really important. Uh, and I think we can do better now with the infrared stuff. So I hope they combine the mirror test and the infrared. I would love to see how that goes. What do you think? Is that possible? Is that, would that even work? Well, it's the 12 days of Christmas. And if this is your first time talking about this stuff or listening to this or, you know, you gotta, you gotta go out and you gotta separate yourself from your friends and family, be alone and look at this stuff. Fake history, mud floods, flat earth, chemtrails, vaccines, 9-11 for crying out loud. If, you're, if you still think that 9-11 happened the way that the commission report says it does, then ask yourself, if the official narrative doesn't include Building 7, you need to figure out who to, what's going on in this reality. Because the wool have, has been pulled over your eyes. If you're a, if you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ and you don't think that there's any lie or deception on going on on earth right now you are deceived you're just as you're you're just a, if you want to just be complacent in putting up your Christmas tree this year and go along to get along uh, you you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of nerve you know to think that there are there isn't a, a massive deception going on, and and once you get to the point of you know acknowledging that there could be a possibility that a narrative that we have been given by mainstream and our government and our educational system that isn't adding up, that's when you start to humble yourself. Well, and it takes a while. It takes a long time. In the head, being humble, and that's what a lot of people have forgotten. We've got to remain humble somehow. It is a bit hard in the deep, dark world out there because everybody's not humble, are they? They're selfish and ignorant. And think Don't they have know to be humble it. up here in the ISS. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yeah, they called me up, so I took a quick rocket up here, rocket ship. I'm still getting used to Hori's new, new, his new look. <laughs> Rocket man. Oh man. You know, speaking of, um, you know, using rockets and whatnot and exploration, um, having been in this conversation and listening to people wanting to do exploration and, and, uh, and it almost seems like that's an obsession now. Like, okay. Okay, you're a flat earther, so you have to go along with the exploration idea. I've kind of stepped back a little bit and I've thought, okay, maybe we don't want to do exploration. And the reason why I say we don't want to do exploration is what if that's an inviting invitation to bring a, a particular, I don't even want to say superior race, but a particular group of people that we go interact with like the whole Christopher Columbus thing, right? So if, if at that time, four or 500 years ago, we'll just go along with the narrative, the group of people said, okay, we're going to have Christopher Columbus and we're going to take all these ships and go to a new world. And they go to the quote new world. And then they see this new um, culture of people. And then they come back and they say, yeah, you know, these people, they, they live this particular way or whatever. Well, then they have this idea that they can go over and just take over that land. Kind of like what they're doing in the Middle East right now, where this particular group of people uh, feel uh, obligated and, uh, um, you know, privileged to take over this particular land when there's already people living on it. So if we do go and explore and we do find a group of people living on another uncharted area, quote uncharted, who are we to go in and just disrupt their culture and take over? And maybe we're going to this exploration to purposefully draw them to come to America, for example, and say, Hey, you know, there's this new um, race of people called the blue avians for example 
who only live in the cold. Okay, so I want people, and I have, I've been just starting to do this for the last week. And this has just been crossing my mind when it comes to exploration and whatnot. But in the mid 1600s is the earliest recorded times that people started taking weather temperatures and finding out, you know, taking, you know, a farmer's almanac, for example, just in the last couple hundred years. And so where that brings me is I would I have snow on the ground here in Minnesota right now. It's ridiculously it gets ridiculously cold here in Minnesota for about four or five months. And we constantly see snow staying on the ground. Well, I've tried to look in the biblical times and see if there's any description of like snow just being on the ground and staying there. And what I have found is that it doesn't snow. It, it might snow overnight, like a couple of centimeters, but then it immediately melts away when the sun comes out or during the day. So I'm just challenging the community to, to look into that and find out how, if we have had winter in the past, has it been like it is now? And my point about the, what you know my rant is right now is how long have we had winter the way it is right now? Because if you watch some of the animated projections of, of how winter just comes to be, <clears throat> it's all winter up top, you know, in, in Alaska, for example. And then at, as, as the winter progresses, the snow starts to come down to the middle of America, for example, North America. And then it kind of, you know, circles around if you're using the AE map, for example. Well, what if they're terraforming because they're using geoengineering? Now they're just blatantly saying, hey, we're spraying the skies. And what if they're um, geoengineering to terraform for a particular group of people that can only live in the cold. You see what I'm saying? So like, what if in the future, 10 or 15 years from now, even in tropical areas, all we have is ice and cold? Cause most, I mean, yeah, we can somewhat adapt to being living in the cold, but let's be real here. If it's 20 below all the time, people will start to die off in the cold. And all we could do is just, we could blame it on geoengineering. Well, it looks like geoengineering kind of screwed up and blocked out the sun completely. And now we have to live in the cold everywhere, even in the tropical areas. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, I know what's going on by any means, but I have kind of just pondered and, and been in silence and started thinking about, you know, why is it that they feel a need to geoengineer? Are they really blocking out the sun because of global warming or are they being are, are the 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 people that the leaders that should not be? Are they terraforming the earth to make the entire earth ice? That's a good question. And the clouds That's are lower. Incredibly good question. Hori's in the clouds. The clouds are lower, aren't they? The clouds, are, it's, it's quite a it's quite an interesting <laughs> um, phenomena up here that's that's happening looks like you're getting chemtrailed yeah i'm getting chemtrailed up here i'm just i just sent my consciousness into uh into the cloud layer into the th into the stratosphere and i've frozen time uh apparently um time is is officially frozen right now and, and i will i will <laughs> i'll have to fix that oh my goodness something's happening oh yeah, something's something's not going right with that. It should be an animated background, damn it. What's going on? Hori's floating around up there now. <laughs> you're, up, you're, up, you're in node three, aren't you? I'm in node three? <laughs> oh, uh, maybe it's because I have to do this. <gasps> oh. Whoa. Oh, there we go. It's much better. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can float even higher. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity. Oh, 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 cable problem. I mean, uh, pocket of gravity right Whoops. there, ladies. <laughs> Pockets of gravity that will get you. That's great. I wish <laughs> I wish they sold green sweatshirts at like hooded sweatshirts at Walmart or something. <laughs> this is actually incredibly difficult to do. This is it's impossible my, uh, to do. Yeah. 
It's an invisible blanket. It's my invisible blanket. Black op. <laughs> I could probably just do that's hell of a lot easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The beauty of green screen. Are you gonna go live later tonight, Hori? Um uh, I I want to try to go live by Monday night. I'm putting together some show notes. I still have a couple things to to script in there, uh, and I want to do some new channel highlights um, because I like doing that every once in a while. I like looking for new channels I've not seen before, giving them some some eyes and ears. And um, so, uh, if I do it tonight, it's going to be after I get my video work done, and I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. I can't make any promises. I need to go live again really soon, though. So weird, isn't it? That little screen there just blanks everything out and makes it look like what's behind you. It's crazy, that. Yeah. That... Magic. There's a star in my belly. Oh, the star is moving away. It's a good thing that they don't use that, um, you know, on mainstream and NASA and all that, because... You know, that would be crazy if they used that to <laughs> deceive people. <laughs> sure would. <laughs> wonder where that yeah. technology came from. Jeez. Yeah. I wonder, yeah. I wonder why this technology exists in the first place uh, to deceive yeah. you. Straight up to deceive you. Digital magic. I'm just glad that nobody, <laughs> you know, that comes up with this stuff has, has reasons behind it. Josh, anyway, so <laughs> you two, you two guys, are sh you know, Hori and Joe are showing what it's all about. It's all fake. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, you know, there's Jesus and that's truth and honesty and trust. There's no opposite. So I'm glad that there's no opposite to, you know, belief in Jesus here in reality, you know would lie or deceive if given the proper resources and occult knowledge you know i just need rapture that's that's all that is truth right truth 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 nobody would ever lie to me here i'm just really thankful personally. oh yeah you, josh you're so funny <laughs> i get a kick out of you man <laughs> oh you guys the earth is generally flat yeah. Just so you know. Lee. Yeah, well, you're all amazing people. Yeah, thanks, Karen, for having us on. I mean, I, I don't, um, I can't think of too much. I just, I wanted to share that idea of exploration, why exploration is such an important thing. I, I think that the if, if it does get mainstream for exploration and flat earth and whatnot, I think it, it'll be perverted. And I mean perverted in regards to making an ensemble about exploration. Hey, you know, let's let's turn exploration into a reality TV show. And then all of a sudden they show up on the shoreline of a, a group of people that they knew was there. And we introduced them into our culture. And, you know, kind of like the V series that I'm sure some people have uh seen or watched in the past and kind of incorporating that culture into ours which is where i think a lot of transhumanism ai technology 5g and even the transgender um idea comes from in just creating the human race as the ultimate human being is both male and female in the same entity because people are are, are in that movement are starting to pervert Genesis when it says and God created them both male and female well they're perverting that term and saying well he created them male and female in the same body and that's what I think uh, if because if you think about a computer a computer has no gender or sex until you give it the voice yes. of a male or female and and just think of Siri and Google and all these other um, automated computers that you t are able to quote talk to all have female voices. Show me, show me an AI that has a male voice. 
you know. Mm-hmm. And there was I... that there was that time that you could get um, the voice of Hannibal Lecter as your uh, car navigator. Hori, you got to have this yep. one going. <laughs> You gotta have this background going. It's uh, it's just footage of uh, SpaceX launch. I'll get out of the way. But, dude, if you guys think about this, okay, in the Bible it says, "And there was war in heaven." And this was something that John visually saw with his eyes. We're watching it. We're living it, and we're we're against it. We're the ones that. Are, are beating it up, I guess, beating it or whatever. Um, I'm going to remove myself for a second. Look at this footage. is crazy. Let's see. I got to figure out how to do this. It looks a bit like Hori's with his thing flashing around. Okay, oh. there's, a, there's the rocket. See what it does to the firmament or whatever, the, the, the atmosphere? See that hole right there? Now it's it's this is war in heaven. This is what's going to bring down the stars. I mean, I I don't really know what else to really. Yes, it's a rocket launch, and yes, okay. Let me run this by you guys. Air? No, none in. There's no air. There's no water. You have to drink your own urine. There's no pressure. There's no life. There's no land. There's no anything in space. Is it space or is it just heaven, the celestial realm, the, a different realm entirely? Look at this. What is that? Yes, we have a physical uh, physics explanation for what it is. Oh, it's a rocket launch and it's shooting jets into the atmosphere to direct his. Yeah, yeah, we have an explanation for it. But what about God? What does he think sitting up on his throne about this stuff coming, shooting these arrows at him? I'm just saying that he this already happened once with the Tower of Babel. And God sent them strong delusion that time too. He, he they sent arrows and spears up to heaven. And you can see my hand when I put it over there. Um they and and God sent the arrows down covered in blood so that they'd think they had some kind of victory. Like that's what this is, the space station and stuff. That it um as far as being real, it's not even in a place. It's in the celestial realm. It's not there is no space. It's just angel, like God created heaven and earth. He didn't create this little in-between uh, wasteland that, that, and why are we going there? It's nothing but death. When you, when people, when astronauts go there, immediately their bones start uh, deteriorating, their heart shrinks. They have to exercise two hours a day just to, to be frail enough when they that's get back. That's what they're telling you, isn't it? But they're that's not there. They that's all rubbish, isn't it? Because they're not there. Well, I, I think they can launch a rocket up, and I think they do put people on the rockets, but what they're doing is being tricked. They're, they're not going to some place with some uh, exploration. What they're doing is they're being tricked into a, a straight-up deception, and so that what I'm getting at is I think that the astronauts can float around in that ISS all they want, and it's not because they're free-falling. It's because they're in a different realm that doesn't have any kind of physics. But... Yeah, but don't forget, though, they keep showing us rockets. They're not using rockets anymore when they want to play in the sky. They're using whatever it is, levitation-y things. And so they're just showing us rubbish because rockets are 50, 100 years old. But they they do build them <laughs> and they do sail yeah, them up there. They've got so. them to, make, to carry on the lie, haven't they? Well, I think that it's more than – I think that they're building them because that it's participation in – in a deception like uh, i guess what i'm saying is that that uh elon musk he made he makes this uh merlin engine for he kind of invents this engine for rockets that that does outdoes what rockets uh could do before like like exponentially and and he's de- like he's developed all these systems where he's trying to bring the money of of launching rockets down, which is so stupid. It's a $360 billion industry that gains zero for everybody here on the earth. It's, it's insane. I think, I think what they're, what they're doing people with 
what they're doing in the sky, and they're really do doing it here on land, air, and sea. You know, within our realm of what we would call um, reality. And that's, uh, there's the new, you know, and I brought this up again, and I'll, and I'll stop trying to, I'm not trying to promote this TV show on YouTube, but it's called Origin. First two episodes are free. Um, I've only watched the first two episodes. I want to try to check it out. And, but I think they're, they're trying to convey like a pathogen is on this. It's a colonization ship basically that left earth and is headed towards this other celestial solar system. And it talks about like, uh, you know, 10 people are left behind on this cryogenically uh, colonization ship. So that's, you know, and again, it goes back to exploration because I really, I really, <laughs> I really think that they're, they're trying to push this idea of us being introduced to or having an quote alien race from a terrestrial external area from us to bring it into our culture. And that is why we're being kind of conditioned regarding uh, transhumanism and the transgender idea, because that is the quote superior race of people. Instead of them being male and females in two separate bodies, they want to put it into one body. Isn't that some so, Baphomet thing or something too? Yeah, it's the Baphomet basically. Okay. But you know, with that, uh, you know, that idea, this colonization of another place is similar to what we all learn about in history because allegedly we living here in the United States, we were colonizing this place and then we just took it over. Right. We, Cause that's the American idea. And I, and I don't think that you have to be the J word to have the mentality of what we would consider those people. That mentality could be anybody. Anybody can have that type of mentality where you go into another region of area and you just take it over and you colonize it with your own uh, history and your own culture and your food and everything and you basically take over. Yeah, you yeah. own it because I'm here because I, I have a, a superiority complex and I'm a better person. I'm a better, quote, race of people than you are. It's a very human way of thinking. Like it's not, I, I think it's like a human nature way of thinking like our evil, uh, sinful nature, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that is, and that's not giving privy. And that's like going back to the vegan idea, you know, just like, oh, well, we can, we can eat animals. Well, then we'll just pervert it. And every, and then we'll have eating contests, right? Hot dog, hot dog eating contests. And we'll throw, and, throw half of it away. <laughs> And throw half of it away, go to a buffet and just eat all the food that you can possible. But the other side of that coin is they're also perverting the agriculture to make all these avocado farms too. You know, so a lot of the agriculture that is being done is being used to make avocado plants and soy and so on and so on. So there's no, there's really no nutrients in the soil that we have now, there's no benefit uh, of a uh, majority of the soil that we do have right now because it's all dead. We pervert There's it. no minerals we pervert in it. Everything. We, we pervert everything. Yeah. That's just what we do. Like we, we're, and, and that's the thing. That's what we're learning. We're learning like, whoa, look at what we've done. Look at what we do. And then we're, we've turned around. We've left that. Like we're like, we want anything but that. And I think that that is, that again is just the spirit of truth showing us what reality is, you know? And I, we have to compromise. I mean, there has to be a massive dialogue about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable behavior and how we treat not only the trees and so on. I mean, how can you have global warming when there's too much CO2 and that's how trees allegedly can procreate, right? And grow is they take in that CO2. So it doesn't even make any sense. And for us to continue to live by this idea that we have fossil fuels, there are no fossil fuels. This is regeneration. We can renew uh, gasoline and, and have real fresh water 
and not like they're doing in California, recycle human waste water. You're going to recycle human waste water and then give it back to the people? Are you kidding me? Yeah, dude, on ISS, it, they do that all the time. Sorry, <laughs> I had to. Come on. Come on. That's totally unacceptable behavior. That That is just not... A little, just a little pee-pee, bro. That's... that's 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 overboard though i mean we we have renewable fresh water available God, to us yeah we could tap right into it you know from why, the earth. why do we go to space right under us. why what's literally why there's nothing there. to we need to focus on to another universe <laughs> yeah we've that's also right? money so we might as well go off it. onto another planet and go destroy that planet. I mean, that's the mentality that, that they have. Well, we've screwed this planet up, so we might as well leave this place and go colonize another planet and then go pervert the hell out of that planet. No, you know, Josh, need... that's it. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, that was, I mean, I was pretty much done with that. Thought. I was just going to say about perverting uh, things, like what um, we go to, uh, what does Elon Musk want to do? He wants to go terraform Mars or whatever, right? Okay. That right there, I know it doesn't sound like an evil thing or whatever, but the idea that Elon Musk said he's going to create a world. Think about that from God's point of view. That's what all I got to say about that. That's why I have Elon Musk in my sight for all this, all this stuff that I'm seeing in the Bible. He fits that role. Like he's blaspheming God big, bigger than anything. He put a Tesla Roadster in God's tabernacle. That's a problem in God's temple. You know what I mean? Like in heaven, it's just wrong. And I think that's written about too, specifically. I think the Tesla is in the Bible, an abomination that stands in the holy place, or it could be the ISS or something. I don't know. It's all coming down soon. I know that. And I'm. Yeah, how much longer can they fake it for? Oh, it's that whatever they're doing, it's about up. Uh, the, the gig is almost up. Can I tell you something else that's on there? It was a lot of this information was on this one where Boeing was outside. It was his first trip outside. But there's even a word, B-I-T-C-H, on there. You can hear them say it. They didn't mask it over. Children watch this. On what? What was that on? One of the videos. I, I recorded it. It's on Sun and Moon. It says okay. the word. I T C H. They say it, and they, and even, and even if it wasn't meant to, and it's, it's just making it sound like that. You can hear that word. So why are they allowing that out when children can hear it? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's just evil, isn't it? They're supposed to be. It, I tell you what, I think it is. They've got so blasé about everything. They don't care about all the mistakes because uh, the majority still believe it's real. I think that part of it too is that any it, you guys know this. It seems like everything that we kind of expose or we kind of like look into and go, hey, there's something wrong here, and we kind of start investigating and researching a topic or whatever. Seems like every single one of those things, there's always these areas of of whatever information or whatever that that are gray areas, gray enough where a person can decide to like default to the, Oh no, 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 you don't understand what's going on there. And, the, and they, they land on this ledge and then they just stay on that ledge. And like every lie has like all these ledges that people can just hop onto and stay there. Like they can just, Oh no, I, I believe this, but it, to me, it's just like a, a game. It's a game, but lies are being ex exposed. That's all I care about. I'm happy about that. It's supposed to be that way. <laughs> Thing is, now I realize this, but we we live, eat, and breathe. We don't even sleep anymore. We become the night people. So what's going on here? We 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 we're, we're in it. Our souls are. It is, isn't it? Come on, everybody in the chat room. Bling bling. See oddity. Animus. Anima. Animus. Globexit, come on, we're threes are. We can't do. You know, we can't just turn our back on it, can we? Jin, sorry, Jin. Hello, Jin, my darling. Um, yeah, we can't turn our back on it. Oh yeah, Joe in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you. I had to. How do you actually say that your channel? Mine. Yeah. 
Oh, it should be plain and simple. <laughs> Effed up world. <laughs> oh, I see. I'm sorry. I'm so thick. I get up it. World. Well, it's funny because I, you know? I ended up <laughs> like I, I made my channel a long time ago before flat earth or anything, but just like for pictures and or videos or whatever. And I think it's funny because uh, of all the things that my channel ends up talking about more than anything, it happens to be Jesus and, and like what what people would call and then so a lot of the channels that i go to they won't say my name i'm i go in the chat and not, they i'm a blue wrench in the chat but they won't they'll be like oh you're here hi joe <laughs> like they won't say f up world but i don't i don't blame them but i'm just saying it's funny how it, things turn out i guess is what i mean that isn't really the most choice name for someone who's for a channel that's trying to uh preach the bible or something like that you know what i mean but at the same time it's just the where i'm at that's how that's truth will do that to someone so it's almost like a testimony too mm. a little bit i don't really think there are swear words really whatever I mean, feels I, right bro whatever gets the word out and, and not hurting anybody yeah no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> you look good there in the clouds or the chemtrails they're swirling around you hoary well, that ain't chemtrails. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, this is I don't know what it is like a comet or something. I'm spinning. I'm chasing in the clouds here, dude. It's the dark energy, but it's light uh, around you. <laughs> and, and I also like Josh's bit about going north or south. I think in you, in a period of time, someone's going to do it, aren't they? Or are we that stupid that nobody's going to even try? I don't think I there'll think be time. Myself, that's my take. There won't, we're running you? out of time. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I know, if, well, if we do do it, I said do do, but if we do do it, um, I heard that. it will be managed Boschman. And like I said, I don't see anybody else who wants Earthers talk about exploration. Where is your itemized list of how much it's going to cost? You know, I don't see anybody putting out any itemized amount of money to say, yes, yeah, yes, this is how much it's going to cost dollars alone to even just get a used vessel that will hold a hundred people. That is also an icebreaker to go out and do this exploration. So until somebody does an itemized amount of money last weekend, okay, all you guys are just blowing smoke. doesn't even mean anything. Oh, let's do exploration. Let's do exploration. Okay, how much is it going to cost? Where are you going to get this money from? Because unless it's done through mainstream and you have Nat G cover half costs, are you going to start up page and, and have that money given to us and then how, how do we go about what well, oh. and how do we just go about uh, checking out there yeah i agree, you know, I, I agree. i'm just saying i see something put an itemized amount of money i say 10 to 15 is going to take for a uh, grassroots exploration idea but would it be fruitful what i'm saying is it's, exactly what's the point that is that's why it that's why it's hard for anything to get started because we all know the the really the the system that is has has indoctrinated our entire lives and our parents and their parents this this system is not really in the mood to back down to what it what it stands for and and we are strong but not financially or or these kind of enterprises are not something that we just have they have that you know that satan has them so we're we're kind of like we're almost like the street preacher that is effective but he doesn't have nothing but his his you know bicycle and his bible or whatever i'm just saying our voices are like thunder right now is what i mean people are hearing but it doesn't mean they're going to believe it but the reason why we're here is so that when we're not here, this is my belief. The reason why we're here is so that when we're not here, they're gonna know the problem. They're gonna know what the problem is. 
because if we didn't if he didn't show us this truth and if we weren't testifying of it the world would just continue on forever in that lie right who is gonna who's gonna expose the lie somebody somebody has to and that's what we're doing right now and i think it only it, it only lasts 1260 days where we actually have the time to wake up wake up to the lie and to spread that truth to the whole world um jesus said and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached uh to to all nations as a witness and then the end would come and i'm like we're in that that's what i say but we all have our own thoughts you know <sighs> yes oh by the way um Bling bling lights on you set, by the way, Hori. In the chat room. Oh, thank you, bling. How you doing, love? Yeah, someone else who went to the. Did you, uh, Josh? Did you meet uh, bling bling? Is he there, Josh? Hello, flat Earth calling Josh. He must have cut out. I, I met her on your. I met her on your show. <laughs> No. Oh, you yeah. are there. Can you hear me now? Did you meet Bling Bling when you went to the conference? I did. I gave her a big hug. She's in the chat room. Hey, Christine. Good to see you out there. Can I? Can I just say we've kind of been going for nearly three hours. It's quite a good time to kind of. Well, Finish three hour hangout quite long enough for everybody. What do you reckon, guys? That's cool. I gotta, yeah, I gotta go in just a minute anyway, yeah. so it's fine with me. But it was, yeah, uh, for sure. Out with you guys. Can we um, do the bit where we... Sorry, sorry, Josh. I was just saying, I've run out of things to say too. <laughs> Um, well, shall we, we say goodbye on air and we'll say goodbye to each other off air. We always say goodbye off air on the Hangout. Anyway, that was a really great um, Hangout today. I think it went a bit on fire at times. And um, great being in the ISS and et cetera with Joe. And it's great being, what were you, what were you, Ori? What, what was I? Yeah, when you came on uh, dead. Was it? I don't know. Was I was just so funny. It was just some some special, I don't know, whatever you'd call uh, this right here. Let me let me put it back on just in case Bling hasn't seen it. This is what I was doing earlier, Bling. Check that CGI. out. CGI. CGI, <laughs> baby. But That's uh, pretty cool, no, I just wanted to tell everybody uh, I'll do a, um, a show coming up here soon. If it's not going to be Saturday or Sunday here, uh, then it will be um sometime monday night because i might go to california and hang out with dan the Waterman and flat earth dude out there on the california strip uh and uh, i think i might spend some glow lights to attract people on over to the flat earth booth so uh, that's what i would try to do if i'm gonna try to do that at all um but so if i don't do that I, i'll try to go live this weekend i'm gonna do a, um, a new channel highlight show for the most part and cover cover the the latest news and proofs that that we've seen so I just want to throw that out there. But uh, it's not going to be on the Hori Sheet Show channel until three more days is when I get off of that ban from – Oh, um, my goodness. How did you get banned? Right. Did you, was it something bad or was you it did, just – You did – You did bat is what I call her now. Uh, she uh, – You did, you know, banned me, uh, got me a strike because I had that model, that dancing model on my car. And she she was like, oh, that's so disrespectful. Your mother, your mother would say that it's so disrespectful. And I was like, my because mom is in the chat. Mom, because of my model that was on the car dancing. And I, I was trying oh. to tell you to like, my mom is in the chat right now. Go go look. You're you're yeah, doing that for obvious reason. It it's because when people flip to the, your channel or wherever you're on, there it. It doesn't matter. It throws, throws it's attractive. Some... They're like, whoa, let's stop here. It's more interesting than just the blackboard or whatever. Exactly. It just draws yeah. people's attention. And she and they'll, you know, they'll give you more time. She, yeah, she doesn't understand that. So whatever. Um 
anyway, I'll be back doing it again on, on the 16th. So, uh, but in the meantime, when I go live, it'll be on the Flat Smackers live channel and um, the Horty Sheet Show Reloaded channel also will be uh, will be my backup channel for everything. So, you know, she's not stopping me. She's just slowing me down a little, I guess. Glad that you're coming back, Hori. Oh, I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of us, you've never been away, have you? <laughs> No, I just took a month off uh, to relocate, pretty much. And I got right back at it as quickly as I could. Relocate, that word kind of hurts. Like, just <clears throat> the thought of it, that's just too much work. <laughs> God, it's so much work. Uh, and it's not really something I wanted to do. <laughs> Pain so is one of them things and <laughs> make the best of it, right? Yeah, I was, I was he, rescued from that situation. He's looking good. He's looking good, and he's got a new look. Can I just ask, um, Josh or do you want to announce? You know, like I think Josh has done a bit anyway. But do you want to say like what's coming up for you? For me, go Nothing. on. You go first, and then Josh can go. Okay. Well, I'm just uh, I'm I'm on a mission to, um, I'm on a mission to get people, everyone around me to stop believing in the globe and the space station in specifically those two things, because I believe those two things are the thing in the Bible that those people overcame. Um, and the whole world could not learn the song that they were singing while they were singing it. But it was because they were singing that song that multitudes of people in the world were saved. That's so what I'm saying is don't believe in the space station. Don't believe in the globe because I see it now. I didn't two years ago. I didn't see it like this, but now I see it as a form of idol of, of false God worship and sacrificing to demons as gods. And it didn't, it doesn't feel that way, but that's, I think how God sees it. <laughs> that's about my, all I got. <laughs> oh, love you lots, Joe. What about you, Josh? Well, on the 15th, I got a meetup going on here in Minneapolis at the Yard House in St. Louis Park, 2 p.m. Central Time. And I, what I'm trying to do is bring the the collective, if you will, of truthers. So to kind of branch out, not necessarily just be strictly all about flat Earth, but also you know, people who might not think that the earth is flat, you know, and they're a purple pillar, but they have an idea of, you know, that this, there's just something wrong with this place. And hopefully to, you know, just bring people out of their comfort zone, meeting new people who do have like-mindedness. I think that people create the building itself. I don't think that a church is a church until people go into it. Um, for lack of a better term, uh, or, or a gathering place. So we'll meet at this restaurant and conversate, hopefully, and then maybe be, uh, find uh, and come to some kind of an agreement about where we can meet uh, on a continual, regular basis, like a community center or, you know, a place where we could just meet up and maybe have uh, a TV or a, something that we could – uh, you know, maybe watch a, a video or plan some kind of activism to do something in public. Cause, you know, like I was saying before, we are we are the teachers now because we can't go into a public school or a college and teach this knowledge and bring to the forefront our opinions. And we have to be example setters. I'm not saying that you need to be perfect and clean up your entire life or anything, but going out and starting that with the intent to help change other people's lives will then bring to your own life conviction about what it is that you should or shouldn't be doing in your own personal life. And I think that that's where it starts is it starts with your own personal convictions of this place 
and then bringing your knowledge, whatever it is, mud floods or, you know, chemtrails or whatever, out into the public. And I, I don't, I, yeah, and, and I can kind of agree with what Joe is saying. I, I still think that there is a number, a couple of years that we still have to go. Uh, I think that they want 5G to be rolled out. They're already starting to do facial recognition at the airport in Atlanta right now. So you can just step up to a camera and have your face uh, be used as, uh, you know, yeah, go through TSA. You don't even need to, you know, sit through here and go through the, you know, process. You can save yourself 10 or 15 minutes. So that's that on Saturday. Maybe do something on Sunday. There's a Vikings game going on, and it's supposed to be 40 degrees and sunny this weekend. So maybe try to do some activism. I don't know what that looks like. But uh, just, you know, again, I mean, I love that people are on the YouTubes and Facebook and sharing their memes and their truth that they feel. It, but you... I still feel like the most important way to convey our message is to be out in the public and interact with them. So, and then, you know, I'm trying to go live every Sunday night. Uh, that kind of is hit or miss on what time exactly. Um, but you know, Sunday nights, I hope to bring some of my thoughts. If you like to hear them or you just like the troll, that's totally fine too. But, you know, what is, what is it that you're doing, you know, in this community? And do you uh, do you really care about where our children are going to be at 10 or 15 years from now? So I don't like how this place is right now. And I think that we need to continue to press forward and make a real impact about what's going on. And, and I'm not perfect. And nobody in the chat I don't think is perfect. So, but don't let that hold you back from speaking truth. So, I just wanted to show show Josh something really quick. Josh, you could probably use something like this little projector out at your. Do you know what I mean? Just an idea. I just thought of it yeah. when you were when you were uh, talking there. Yeah, I could do that. Um, if we can find like a community center, um, a, a, some kind of a, a room where we can gather together 10 or 15 people or something like that and do, you know, maybe a teaching of activism. Uh, how can we um, help encourage other people to speak confidently in public? Because I know a lot of people probably go out there and might not have any kind of sales experience or experience talking to public like customer service or whatever. And there needs to be some kind of a training program maybe out there for us to use to help people get confident. And, you know, maybe a lot of people don't think that that's important. You know, I got, how is, how is this truth movement going to help me pay my bills? I really like what I'm doing, right? I like my job. I like my comfort of my home and my family. I don't want this to change. And I think there might be a lot of adults out there who might have even just backlash uh, that they don't want things to change because they enjoy the comfort of their life. So it's just something to think about that not only will we probably get trolled by people who have a disdain for science deniers, quote, but also just regular um middle class people because if if we were to have our own way this whole place would be shut down and there would be no internet you know there would be no 5g there would be no cell phones or anything and i think we've gotten uh ahead of ourselves thinking that cell phones and the internet is a, a great way to communicate and waste time and you get to play your online video games at such high speed and you get to play call of duty and everything well you know what guys and gals if i had my choice i'd shut it all down i would be all shut down and we would all start over and we would we would have we would sit down and we would say okay how is this going to benefit society and what are you going to use it for because i'll tell you what a majority of teenagers right now especially teenage boys all that they use the internet for is pornography and video games 
And if that's all you're going to use the internet for, shut it down. And we need to start over. I could agree with that 100%, man. <laughs> Except I like the CGI. <laughs> right? I like the pretty movies that I watch that can't differentiate between real and fake, right? Then so, you kind of dream off into one or the other, right? Yep. I'm going to be so showing a little we, bit of We need to use our technology. platforms. You know, um, use your platform. Uh, use your green screens to try to wake up the millennials, right? But eventually there is going to become a time where we need to start drawing lines in the sand and we need to start making moves and changes. And you will go to jail and you will be persecuted and you might even die for this cause. So be ready for that. And if you're not in, if you're not ready for that, then step away. You know, I'm tired of seeing these activists who go out and do activism and say, oh, it was a really crappy day today with activism, huh? Shut your mouth. Stop doing activism then. Because just go away. I don't need you in this community at all. If you're just going to be a negative Nancy all the time. Oh, gosh, I wish 20 people would have showed up, but we only had 10. What a crappy day for activism. Then leave. Shut your mouth. Why are you even here in the first place? Activism isn't the stock market. You're not going to wake everybody up just because you've been in the game for six months. Plan on being in the game for years and years and years, okay? I'm tired of these people that do activism a couple of times. Oh, oh it was a crappy day for activism, huh? No, it was actually a great day because we woke one person up. And if it's one person that you wake up or make them to be intrigued, about the topics that we're talking about, whether it be mud floods or vaccines, chemtrails or flat earth, that's a win. So if you're not ready to do activism and go out in the public and talk about it, and you're just gonna be a pushover when the police come by your park and say, you know, you need to leave, then leave, get out. So that's that's where I'm at. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just getting, Irritated with the people who think they're going to just change the world in a couple of months. Takes four months. I'm just kidding. Yeah, right? <laughs> Takes 33 months. So there it is. Yeah, there's my rant. So it was a very good rant. Thank you very much, well, well, George. Well done. Well done. Yeah, everybody listen. No, stop messing around. Not I'm talking to the chat room. I'm talking about, oh, there. Stop messing around. Get on with it. We've got a job to do. <laughs> what better time of the year right now, right? To then to share truth. That's where everybody's at right now. Family, friends, giving. It's better to give than to receive. Then we need to take we need to take advantage of the season right now. You know, with Christmas and everything going on. Use it to our use it to our advantage, at least for the time being, because this is all we got right now. It is the season to be flat smacked. Exactly. Uh, Hoary Street, that one is. Anyway, can I just say, um, I was asked, Patricia, are you there, Patricia? She was there earlier on. Patricia. I am here. I am here. What hey, Patricia. You, you can hear her. See, she's there. Patricia, what did you make of tonight's hangout? Um, well, I've enjoyed listening to you all. And um, it, it's just nice. I, I like when people come together, I mean, we have differences, you know, would it be pretty boring if we were all the same? You know, we all think differently and, you know, it's a good thing. We have to embrace our differences and get on and, and fight the fight. Simple as. And I love you all, by the way. Yeah, she loves everybody as does our Patricia. Has anybody else got anything to say? I love all you guys so much. This is fun. Even if it's, it, it isn't a fun job what we're doing. It, it, it's communicating. We're communicating with each other. Yes. Because we don't have to, do we? None of us have to be here. We do it because we're hoping other people will see the hangouts and the family gets bigger. Anyway, again, once again, thank you everybody in the chat room and um, thank you everybody on the panel. Josh, Corey, Joe, Patricia. Thank you, everybody. Back tomorrow. Cheers. Goodbye. Thanks.